Sit back and relax while you listen to Train Kickers Podcast. I'm Dave, and along with my co-hosts, Stan and Steve, we're going to take you all around the world of miniature wargaming. On tonight's episode, um, we're going to get back to the Primarchs. Maybe next episode, maybe the one after that, um, because it's going to take a good bit of review to get comfortably able to do a bigger discussion on them. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to start going through the Imperium book. Um, So we are going to start with Dan's favorite. We're going to start with Custodes, uh, partly because he knows it exceptionally well, but also partly because this is an army that is primarily, or at least if not everything, but a large amount in plastic. So if you are looking for something that's not a legion to get into, here is a good option for you. Uh, We're going to go through every unit as best we can. Um, The hope is to be able to get through everything. We might not quite get onto the Lords of War as much, and we'll see how that goes, but the goal is to get through everything. Uh, Now, before we begin, though, I do want to bring up one particular thing. Um, So if you are a gamer out of New Jersey, especially in the northern area, you might be familiar with uh, Time Warp Comics and Games, which is in Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Um, As of right around the time of the recording of this, it's the 19th of December, the owner of that store, David Bauer, actually passed away. Um, If you know either the store or him himself, he was always the type to be very welcoming and opening you know welcoming for people um i know at least for me as someone with a bit of anxiety and all um going into like a store that you don't know kind of seeing all these people having conversations that you know you're not a part of you know you're you're not in on the jokes or anything like that it can feel a little off-putting at first and i always found that there especially because of him himself it was always a very welcoming and friendly environment i mean it, I, I didn't get there as much as I would have liked over the last few years because I, I live a little further away. But especially when I live closer, I found, you know, he, he was always there. He was always a, a fixture. He was always, you know, there to help anyone, always to make it feel warm and welcoming. He really added a nice atmosphere, not only to the store, but to the area itself, you know. And, and the store itself has been there, and he himself has been there for a very long time. So, you know, it's something where the community, you know, has really lost something important and you know hopefully for the family and loved ones in these sort of trying times that they take at least some small semblance of solace that because of that man and his contributions to the wider environment that he made a very welcoming open and just supportive environment for people a lot of times who truly needed it um i i I don't think it's that crazy to say that a lot of times gamers um, maybe more so in the past, maybe less so now. We're not always the most welcomed group. They usually were a lot more isolated, and game stores really have allowed that you know ability for these people to flourish. And this was a store and a person who was instrumental of that in Jersey. So you know, just wanted to share thoughts on that, and you know, hope for the best for those who knew him. And now onto the show. All right, so um, we are going through Custodes tonight. I'm sure Dan is very happy. We were discussing some different things to, <laughs> to talk about tonight. Um, we had something else in mind. We're probably going to do that for next week. We'll talk about that. I'll probably talk about that in the show closing. Um, but we are now on to these guys. So we are going to make we're obviously going to do the same sort of style in general we're not just going to have dan talk about this for the next two hours or however long it takes us that wouldn't be fun for you wouldn't probably be fun for us either it wouldn't be fun Uh, for me i can't do it dad jesus you you talk for a living same as i do we can talk for a very long time (laughs) only in the cold weather when it's cold i will just because my voice will start to bother me over time because of how dry the air is if it's not dry i can talk for five hours straight Um, But we're going to round robin this as normal. We'll obviously let Dan take um, options when he feels strongly about it, as well as if you have any final thoughts when we're bringing up individual units. We talk about something, we'll obviously say what we think, but you're more experienced in these particular things. Um, So we'll make sure that you can mention it as well. Um, All right. You're probably the best person, at least to start out. Why? So, so the the method we're going to do here, they're very similar to a legion in terms of, you know, they list units, but it's a little bit more like the the main book where you're kind of going through it by, by force work slot. But they do start with essentially their quote unquote legion rules. So we're going to start there, and then we're going to yep. start going through the units in the natural order. We're going to go in the order the book says has. So we'll mention essentially where we're looking for this. 
but I figured Dan probably makes the most sense to start about the army rules because I, I personally don't know them that well. So it probably makes sense to have someone who actively uses them tell us some of these distinctions here. So of course, of course. And we're on page what? What page are we this starting? Is Seventeen. On? We're starting 17. on seventeen. Got it. So we're actually skipping a little bit further because the warlord traits before, but let's do their legio trait. So custodies do not have a legion trait per se, but it is kind Losers. of a legion trait because it is part of their it's their army rule essentially. So it belongs to Legio Custodes. I'm not going to read all the fluff text, but it's basically Legio Custodes. And essentially, you get bonuses when there is a nemesis unit that you are interacting with. So before I explain what the bonuses are, what the hell is a nemesis unit? So the idea behind this is Custodes are the guardians of the Emperor, they're the bodyguards. If there's something scary on the battlefield, something that can threaten the Emperor, they get angry that's their job they're targeting stuff that is should not be on the battlefield so a nemesis unit includes it basically has to fill one of the three bullet points if it fills multiple it fills multiple but it's supposed to be one, it could be any one of these three the first um the first uh condition is that it is one of these unit subtypes so it's a primarch a dreadnought monstrous reinforced bombard demon corrupted super heavy unique or knight so it, you are a nemesis unit if you are one of those categories all right primark dreadnought monstrous reinforced bombard demon corrupted super heavy and unique or knight sorry um okay let's say you don't fulfill that then you go to the next bullet point if a majority of the weapons of uh, sorry if a majority of the unit has a value of five in the following characteristics so you have either five majority sorry five weapon skill ballistic skill, wounds, or initiative. Now, I will point out that the FAQ that GW point out, very specified, because a lot of people are like, oh, well, what happens if you have um, uh, spears, or the reach weapons, right? That might increase you to yeah. five. Or let's say you have, you know, special space wolf stuff. No. I would say no, because that's not your un- stat. Exactly. It is unmodified character. So you know how people are, Dave. It is unmodified. No, it, it, well, no, th- that's a worthwhile question, because very true, w- but- when... when- I need to think about my weapon skill or my initiative is when I'm in combat, which is when you would trigger. I, I'm not, I'm saying as someone who knows the game well and has played GW stuff for a while, it feels obvious, but I still like them talking about obvious answers because okay, makes sense. They, they've, they ruled um, one of the pieces, the exact opposite one minute aside from here. Um, they ruled at least one thing, exactly the opposite of what I thought what where, you- um, the uh the stand your ground um is that what it's called for the one reaction where you stand to to disorder them yes yes, hold the line yeah because you fail it you do run they catch you you don't get to regroup you're swept you're dead huh yeah i must have missed that one because because it's a morale check not a leadership i assume my assumption was they used the wrong word and they said no we meant that oh also you don't get a chance to regroup it they catch you then so I like when they even spell out what feels obvious, because sometimes it turns out the answer isn't the obvious thing that you thought, I find. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's a good response. Sometimes I feel like the book just needs more examples with diagrams. Like, you know, squad A charges squad B. Squad B declares they're going to hold the line. They have failed the check, or they have passed the check. And it kind of like branches from there, showing the two outcomes. It would help. It would help that a lot. or you know, yeah, examples, picture, anything that helps clarify exactly what's occurring, but or like you know, at, from the beginning, like when do you do your shrouded saves, things like yeah. that. Yeah, they they made it better now. The FAQs have yeah. definitely helped. They have a lot more to go, and we will at some point get to discussing where that is and some other sets who have who've done sort of their own FAQs or changes. But all right, what about this third? What's the third thing? So that was the yeah, so that was the second thing. Sorry about that. And the That's third okay. thing is this is the easiest one. It contains the warlord. <laughs> Very easy. So um, if you satisfy one, again, one of those three, you are a nemesis unit. So what does this mean? Well, if you are a nemesis, all models with the special uh, the special rule is Legio Custodes, by the way. So when I say these special rules, that's the custodians. So all models with Legio Custodes gain plus one attack when locked in combat with a nemesis unit. All right, so you get an additional attack, pretty nice. 
if uh, you're charging a unit composed entirely of models uh, with the Legion Custodes unit, so for example, if you have a sister in the unit, they don't get this bonus. Uh, you get an additional bonus of plus one to all charge rolls. Okay, that's pretty good. And when rolling to hit when engaged with a nemesis unit, you can never score essentially worse than a four plus to hit unless it is a Primarch. So you will always, 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 always hit on a four up unless you are fighting a Primarch. And that's essentially what it boils down to. That sounds, sounds more complicated than what it is. But in, in reality or in practice of what I found, not many people take nemesis units. Like there's one or two on the board. So I just tell the opponent, hey, listen, that's my nemesis unit and done. It's very easy to keep track of. Well, I mean, and maybe for the armies right now, but it is, it's essentially the things that could put theoretically hurt them. Exactly. I'm, you know, like all, all your dreadnoughts. Okay, being able to hit. I mean, they're usually maybe a better strength, but automatically hitting dreadnoughts at least on a four or better. You don't need the fives or sixes in some of those spots. Or even a lot of those cases, having there's a lot of even units now that have like the weapon skill five or initiative or or sorry, um ballista skill five, those sort of things. Like it's yes. I feel it's a lot of stuff. No, it, you'd be surprised. So far in the games I've had, it's come up well, every game, obviously. But honestly, it's only affected maybe two units at most maybe yeah, but it's all the special units yes it's yeah, only the special it's not units. the it's not but the base units you don't need anything for that anyway you're just gonna no, no, them no, anyway. yeah, we'll figure that out very quickly no no we do not yeah. all right so that is their army rules we will move on so we are doing the different the, the units in the order that they have in the book and oh, first one i'm oh, sorry for our warlord traits i yeah, oh because it wasn't on that page Exactly. That's why. Was it before? Where that? Where's the word? It's right before. It's on the page right before. Not page. I'm on the page it's right It's on the before. bar. It's on the, yeah. It's golden it example. A single warlord tree. It's Got it. Okay. That's why I didn't see it. <laughs> Go ahead. Talk about their single warlord tree. Okay, I'll, Steve, talk about it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. I haven't talked I haven't much yet. So, uh, if you're a warlord <laughs> custodian, he must take the golden exemplar warlord tree. So, you got no choices. You are the golden exemplar. And any combat with at least one friendly model within 12 inches of a warlord with this trait, or combat includes the warlord with this trait, in a plus one to nerve wounds cause purposes of deciding which side has won the combat. In addition, while engaged in a challenge, a warlord with the trait gains plus one to their attacks and initiative characteristics. That's it. Yep, no, no bonus reaction. No bonus reaction. But that's probably for the best. Yes, but it doesn't need it yet. It's a good it, listen to in practice it's, again. It's good. It reads like half of a Primarch tree. Because we just yeah. covered all those. That's what's fresh in my mind. It's like, oh, you know, if you're within 12 inches, you get plus one to close combat scores. Simple. Real simple. Honestly, what helps me is the plus one initiative, believe it or not. Um, because we'll, we'll get to it soon. But the HQs are, they're Praetors buff. Like they're Praetors better. But they're only initiative five which is actually quite surprising oh, for a custodian. No. Yeah, no, oh no. I feel so no, but, bad for you. So having initiative six does help immensely when you're in a challenge though. And it's only one dude, but hey, you know, any little bit helps. <laughs> the uh, the question becomes, do they need help? Um, Funny, okay. So again, what I've seen is troops, no, but they don't get affected by the warlord trait. Your warlord does get mooked if he doesn't roll well. Um, That's true of any warlord, though, honestly. Yeah, true. But it's funny because he's only, only again, initiative five. So you'll run into cases where special characters are initiative six, like your special general's initiative six, and you're just like, oh, shit. So it makes sense that, like, your custodian's like, oh, no, this guy's better than my banana. <laughs> I'm going to be the golden exemplar. So it's just kind of fluffy and hilarious, in my opinion. All right. All right, so now we'll move on to the first guy, which – um He's listed as a Primarch, but you said he's he's just a Primarch because just so he gets those special rules. Yeah, I think, to be honest, like, we'll, we'll talk about his stats in a second, but honestly, I think he's a Primarch so he doesn't get modified. That's no, I'm not sure it. old as. Yeah. Um, as we it's start funny. to go through these units, does anyone have any particulars that they want to do? Obviously, we'll break in in sets of three, but when we think of these three leaders, does anyone want any of them in particular? Uh, I mean, I'll take Tribune. <laughs> I'll take Tribune. Okay. 
So, Steve, do you want the Primark guy or the regular guy? I guess I, I'll take the Primark. Get it out of the way. Okay. All right. Rip All off right. that bandit. So, we got Constantine Valdor, the Captain General of Legion Custodes, the Shield of the Emperor, and the first of the 10,000. Um, the stat line is a nice, beefy, beefy stat line. He's got move 8, weapon skill 7, ballistic skill 5, strength 5, Toughness five, wounds five, initiative <laughs> six, attacks five, leadership ten, and a two up save. You it get one, yeah, right. You get one <laughs> Constantine Valdor. Um, he's got the Apollonian spear and a misericord. Dan, I'm gonna need you to translate all these things for us. In a yes, of course, I got you. He's got the Corinthian war plate. He's got frag grenades. Got to be frag grenades. He has melt bombs. That this is the first. Primark slot unit that has an extra grenade type. So yes. I'm going to even hold on. I'm going to even spoil it for you. Every that's custodian Trump. has melt the bombs. Wait, that's <laughs> not even true. Actually, now think about it because um, Alpharius had the veteran bombs. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so every he's not custodian the first, has yeah. Really? Oh wow. Yes. Every that's single good. one of them. It is. Oh, that's disgusting. It. it used to pay for it. Now it's actually just baked into the points. Which that's disgusting. no, it's it. You auto take it. You had to spend points for it. Now it's just there and it's baked. No, no, it's it's disgusting because I remember personally going through the entire Space Marine Army list and looking at all the units where they lost melt bomb access. Yeah. Ah. So right. we know who took them all. Yeah, who took? Yeah, not right. That, ironically, not that I ever used them. <laughs> and uh, finally, he's got an uh, array strike. Whatever that means. He is a Primark type, which let's see how much of this I remember. Or we just have Dan, you know, just tell us. Oh, God, no. The Primark. Okay. Basically, okay. he can't. Primark be unit type. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Please he's an no. independent character, eternal warrior. He has fearless, but he can still get shrouded saves. Mm -hmm. um, he gets it won't die on a five up. He is bulky four. He is relentless. He's always a character model. He could have taken negative modifier to characteristics other than wounds. And his snapshots are normal ballistic skill. All hits inflicted by him get to pick who they hit. Mm -hmm. The owner, like the, the Primarch user, gets to allocate it. Um, he must be the Warlord if he, because he's a Primarch. Yeah, so many it. rules. So many rules. That's why um, I said nope. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then for his personal special rules, he's a Legio Custode. He has Counterattack 1. Lightning Blows 6 up which I might need a translation on. I and got you. And shockingly, he's a loyalist. Whoa, what? Who would have thought? if he's not enough points at 350, you put him at 475 and buy him a teleport transponder array. All right, All right. before we get on to his special things, Dan, want, for the ones that aren't there, like the Apollonian Spear will be on the next is page. There, yes. So, Let, the so good news most is, of them have Misericordias. Let's start exactly. with that. What is that? All of them, except the Terminators, have Misericordias, which ironically, they're the only models actually modeled with Misericordias, and they don't have it, which is the funniest salt moment. Uh, Misericords are very, very simple. They are wep uh, they're normal they're we normal weapons, all right? So you get a bonus attack in case you're not two-handed. Uh, they're strength four, AP dash, I think, uh, and instant death. That's essentially what they are. They are strength four, instant death, AP dash, daggers. That's literally all they do. Well, the instant death is that's really yes. good. It's a big deal. But uh, I'll be honest, you don't use it ever because of the other weapons they have. Um, but it's nice. I, I I guess if you don't want to kill the unit you're in, you use the misericordia. <laughs> like I, I, I guess... want to live in a world where instant death is just, eh, it's there and it's nice. When we get to their melee weapons, you're going to see why. But honestly, if you're using the misericordia, it's because you want to stay in combat because then they get their full armor saves. No, you just I, stab I, a contemptor with it and laugh and it loses D3 wounds. Oh god, wound a contemptor on a sixth. I'd rather just use the spear. Well, no, custodes <laughs> have a, a contempt. Don't they have a rule that don't they don't wound any worse than a four? No, no that's, hit, that? hit, that's hit, hit. Oh, hit. My apologies. That's hit. Okay, yeah, good. It's only hit. Oh, did you think it was yeah. wound before? Is that why? Oh, I, I I thought when I read it, it was wound. I was like, oh, that's crazy. No, okay, no, 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 no. It's hit, hit, hit. Okay. It's well, yeah. Crazy. So they're not gonna. Yeah, they're not gonna go against uh, yeah. a. Contender, Again, the misericord is. I've used it once, and that was only because I needed to stay in combat, so I didn't get shot. 
That was literally, <laughs> I didn't need to kill my opponent. Um, but that's the Misericordia. Everyone has it. If you have a, not a two-handed weapon or a shield, congratulations, you have an extra attack. But 90% of our shit is two-handed, so... Airy Shrike is really cool, though. Airy Shrike is a war gear that essentially... Uh, you know how you test for um, uh, Disordered uh, yeah. when you Deep Strike? It makes the Disordered roll uh, one or two. Not for you, but for your opponent. Okay. So essentially, your opponent gets Disordered on a one or two. It, okay. It's pretty nice, good. Yeah, it's exactly. Pretty good. It's a free piece of war gear. The most important one, though, in my opinion, is the Teleport Homer, which is a big salty moment for me, but I'll talk about that when I get to the Tribune. But a teleport homer, the reason it's so goddamn expensive, 125 points, is because it's not just him that's deep striking. What you do is you select up to three units with five models or less than them. However, this does not include special characters or, or independent characters. So, for example, you have a squad of five and then, let's say, attach two independent characters. Even though that's seven, the start it, the unit was five. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you could you choose up to three units with five models in them, and they gain deep strike. That, that it's the simplest rule, but very powerful, essentially. Yeah. It's a powerful but simple rule. And then what is lightning blows? Ah, so this is <laughs> this did not get fact or eroded, so we have no so let well, we know what it is. So lightning blows is on a roll of whatever that number is, so in this case a six, mm -hmm. you generate an additional hit. Okay. Um the reason I laugh though is because if you notice the Apollyon the Ap Apollonian spear also has lightning Apollonian. Blows. So we have no idea whether it stacks or what the hell it is, but most people just say it doesn't stack and it's just, you know, you roll six and you get an additional attack. Yeah. If the rule doesn't specify that it stacks, then yeah. it is the same rule. It would not stack. He's so to me, fast. that's simple. Yeah, exactly. He's so fast. He lightning blows. <laughs> he needs to do it twice. No, no, okay. I it's mean, no, that's hey, all it is. He uses Misericordia. Then you know it's useful that the model has it. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Ah, you know what? I didn't. I think you might be the first person to think of that. To be quite honest, yeah. it's like rending on a weapon versus rending on a model. You on know, a model that hilariously makes sense. Am I say that. Oh, okay. No, it does make sense. It, it yeah, is. That's... I don't. It, it, my hope is that's why they did it. But um, yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> but no, so all that's right. all. That's the rest of it is on his unit entry. But that, and I'll go through the weapons as we approach them too. But that, that's, yeah, of course, that's it. All right. So Steve can go back and tell us about his special things listed on the second page. Then yes, it's not that much stuff. No. Um, he has the spear. It's a melee weapon, but also a gun. Um, it's strength plus two in melee. It's got an AP of two. It is a melee weapon, a specialist weapon. Lightning blows six up once again, and murder strike four up. Uh, if you think your paragon blades were good, this is more good. This is gooder. <laughs> more good, Jesus Christ. It's a gooderist. I mean, come yes, on. Yes, it, it, it is in fact the gooderist of weapons. Um, damn, that's good. That's that's really good. So he's swinging at strike seven. Yeah, sheesh. Okay, nice. And just in case, you know, you wanted to kill some dudes at range, he's got range 18 on the bolter part of his spear. It is strength 5, AP 2, assault 2, and concussive 1. Which is better than Sick. some actual Primark shooting weapons. Not all of yeah. them. There's some that are good, but there's it's better than a decent amount of theirs. I'd shoot that gun. Yes. Um, and then finally, he has the Corinthian Warplate. He gives him a 2 of armor save and... Everyone's favorite, the three up invulnerable save, and any loyalist models that can draw line of sight to him or lock in the same combat as him can use his leadership value of 10 instead. Well, no, not can't. They just do. They just yeah. use his leadership, which cannot be modified because he's a Primarch. Yep. So you're just testing on 10s. Yep. So that's it. Yeah. yeah that's so. It. I mean, obviously, also him being a, a Primark means he does fill a different slot. He fills the Primark slot. He has the same restrictions based on points and things like that. Have you actually taken him? So I have a thing against taking special characters. I okay. very, very, very rarely, if ever, take special characters. And that's just a me thing. Mm -hmm. Not because I don't like special characters, but because I'm stupid and I like, <laughs> I like playing with my own special characters that I create out of fluff. But I have people who I've seen take him. Um, he's awful 
awful at killing Primarchs. Like, do well, not. That's okay, though. Exactly. Some Primarchs are terrible at killing other Primarchs. Ever, ever take him against the Primarch. He will lose against even against Erebus, I think. Like, that was the game, too, where he was fighting against Erebus, and even Erebus punched him in the face. It was bad. Um, because, again, murder strike doesn't matter, and strength seven wounds most Primarchs on a, either a three or four. It, it's just, it. he's not a Primarch killer. However, he will absolutely mop the floor with literally anything else you throw at him. That is not a Primarch. Um, I believe he wins against Sigismund. I'm almost certain he does. I cannot remember Sigismund for the life of what. I think he beat Sigismund, but Sigismund is also a monster. But that being said, like Sigismund's is also cheaper, very much. And so I know I'm kind of cheating by talking about tribunes a little bit, but because I'm talking about them next, but I do want to point out something. The reason I'm salty is because you can take him, and I need math here. Primarchs can be taken at 20%? 25. 25%. 25%. Yeah, so he can be they taken count at, the same way a Lord of War does. So, so it's all points. Minimum not 2,000 that you would. points. Yeah. So the minimum is 2,000. So he can be taken at yeah. 2,000 points. So for 2,000 points, you can have teleport homers, which is really cool, right? The only other way to access teleport in the entire army is by getting a Tribune, which is only accessible at 3,000 points. So I kind of don't like the fact that I'm limited in my deep strike by taking a, a named character. That is the only salt point I have. But other than that, he's good. I mean, it, 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 it could be for balanced reasons that they didn't true. want the access. Very true. It's just, it, it's a salty point for me because of, you know, for reasons. <laughs> well, but, but you figure, I mean, I've seen the army in action. When you get to people, they tend to melt. The yes. last thing that would make the game fun is that your guys are just instantly there. Very true. Like that's not going to be a fun game for me. So Sigmund's two thirty. I like you this guy it. might you beat him, it. but this guy's also hundred plus points more than yes. him. And Sigismund and wouldn't and struggle that much to hurt him. He would do a Sigismund lot. Sigismund would probably kill this guy because Sigismund yeah, I think so. I want to say he does. I want to say he does. Um, it might depend a little bit on who gets yeah. the charge. Obviously, a little bit of that. And if he actually kills the warlord, he'll get an extra victory point because that's Sigismund's uh, special rule. Oh God! And yeah, I think if he remember? Yeah, he's got the mark. Because of Primark, he gets even more. He might. Uh, not in that. Just just killing a warlord. There might be okay. some other stuff. Remember, most missions have if you kill Price a Primark, you can get extra stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, he has. The, the big thing is he has less wounds and less attacks. But if, if he gets the charge, he has a shot at it. If not, maybe it'll go bad. But this other dude's also a hell of a lot more expensive, so I'm not too worried yes. about that comparison there. He's listen. Is he a good unit? Yes. Would I take him? Nah. I don't yeah, like but you're not taking him because he's a special character. All right. Exactly. Let Let's get on get on to the shield captain, who I so guess tribune. is the, the normal. Tribune. Oh, oh, sorry, shield no, captain. No, uh, sorry, yeah, tribune. So, yeah, 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 so he's basically yeah, shield have... captain. He is shield captain plus, if anything. Got it. Okay. So he's basically so the shield captain is, is your version of a praetor, right? This is better Praetor, essentially. Okay. So, Custodian Tribune, 300 points. They are hefty. Um, movement 8, which I will point out, by the way, most of the stats of the Custodians will be almost exactly the same with very minor differences. But just one. So, Movement 8 is across the board, pretty much all Custodians. Weapon Skill 7. Ballistic Skill Strength Toughness is all 5. That's also across all Custodians. 4 Wounds. Okay, not bad. Initiative 5. 5 Attacks. Leadership 10. 2 Up Save. He's a Tribune. Uh, his unit type will never change. Uh, the unit type will also never change against the Custodians. All Custodians have Skirmish. Not all of them are character, I should have said, but they all have Skirmish. Uh, he's also a character. His war gear is a Guardian Spear, a Misericord, Orc Battle Plate, Frag Grenades, Melta Bombs, Airy Shrike. Um, normally, he's a Tribune, which I mentioned before. It's a very, it's a lot of words or fluff, but it's very easy. Basically, Tribune means he cannot be taken. Um, in a value of less than 3,000 points in a primary detachment. Uh, and he's always your warlord unless Constantine Valdor is on the battlefield. Um, he's Eternal Warrior, which is the whole point of the Tribune. Uh, he's Fearless, Bulky 3, Relentless, and Loyalist. Um, let's talk about some of the weapons. Because, again, the weapons are... They don't change much amongst the units, bar some specialized weapons. So... Let's talk about the Guardian weapons first. So for those who are following along on the Liber Imperium, we're going to be on page 
147. So all the weapon, guarding weapons, are uh, very similar in so far that all of their shots, their, their guns, are exactly the same except for like the melta gun and stuff like that. They're all, uh, all the bolter versions are 18 inches, strength 4, AP 4, assault 2, and shred. It's just two shots, shred, strength 4, AP 4 across the board. Um, you get some differences when you get the pyrithite spear, which is basically a melta gun. It's six inches, strength eight, AP one, armor bane. Um, you have an adrathite spear, which is strength five, AP three, one shot, instant death, armor by and gets hot. And then the paragon wait, wait, blade. It's assault one, not one shot. Assault one, yes. Yeah, oh, sorry, you, yeah, assault, yeah, sorry. The way you said it made sense, it can only shoot at once. Sorry, no, apologies. Assault one. Yes, assault one. That's and right. then the paragon glaive basically is the same thing. It just goes up a strength. Uh, the Venatari Lance, we'll talk about in a second. I'll actually talk about the Venatari Lance when we get to the um, to the actual Venatari, because they're weird. All right, yeah, that's um, right. And fun fact, what changes about, they're all AP2, so you don't have to worry about it, but they're all AP2. And what changes is, basically, they're, they're, they're specialized what they do. So, for example, a Guardian Spear is two-handed, duh, and it's Reaping Below 1. So if you touch uh, two uh, models, bases with two models, you get an extra attack. The axe is two-handed and unwieldy, but it's plus three strength. Okay. So you start instant deathing marines, but it is a, it's basically a power fist, essentially. The warblade, which is your normal guardian sword, is strength five AP2. Or it's actually strength user, by the way. So if you somehow reduce strength, then it does go down. Uh, the Pyrithite Spear and the Adrathite Spear are exactly the same. In fact, the Paragon Glaive is exactly the same. It's still plus one strength AP2 with Reaping Blow. The only difference is that the Paragon Glaive, like a Paragon Sword, has Murderer Strike 5 up. Although I think a Paragon Sword has 6 up. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And I mean, I'll take the Venatari Lance is the same as the Spear. It's plus one strength AP2, melee two-handed, no Reaping Blow though. Um... But that's essentially guarding weapons in a nutshell, which, again, what changes their statistics, but they're all basically AP2 with certain different variations. Um, so he can take any one of the guardian weapons, including the Paragon Glaive. He can take a Paragon Blade. Um, uh, he can take a Solarite Power Talon, which is a Lightning Claw at Strength 5 AP2. No rending, but with Shred. He could take a Solarite Power Gauntlet, which is strength 10, AP1 unwieldy. That's what the Imperial Fists have. Um, he can take, what else is new? I'll talk about the Meridian Blades in a second. <laughs> Here's massive salt point number one. Are you ready for this? He could take a Presidium Shield for free. So <sighs> the Presidium Shield, which everyone modeled on their custodians, used to give plus one invulnerable save. It was a cyber familiar, essentially. That's what it was. Um, now it's just a five up invulnerable. Uh, which doesn't matter because Orc Battle Plate is a two up, four up. That's why it's free. Um, you can take a Teleport Transponder Ray for 125 points, an Architect Pistol for five. Uh, let's talk about the Mer Meridian Blade, the, 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 the cow in the room. No, that's not how it goes. The hippo in the room? The 600 pound gorilla. The 600 pound gorilla. The phrases, yeah. So. What you're going to notice, and I'm going to kind of preface this, but not I'm not being negative, Nancy, but I want to preface this when we talk about the custodians. The custodians are not really internally balanced. Expertly balanced, also not really, but we'll talk about that in a second. But internally balanced, they are not balanced. You will notice that the Meridian board swords are free. They're not points. Paragon blades are 25 points. So you're like, oh, wow, Paragon blades are a lot better because of Murder Strike. Meridian swords are a pair of swords. You don't get a bonus attack for them, by the way, but they're modeled basically as a pair of swords. Essentially, they're, if you play 40k, they're the blade champion. They're essentially multiple stances. You choose between three separate stances. And the entire unit, by the way, if it has meridian blades, the entire unit must select the same stance. So you can't select multiple different stances. The meridian sword has three different stances. Uh, one is raptor spreads its wings which is Strength User, AP2, Rampage 3. So you get three bonus attacks if you're outnumbered. The Grasp... <laughs> I hate this goddamn name. The Grasp of the Rainbow Serpent is Strength 10, AP1, um, Measured Strike. That means you only get one attack, by the way. You don't get bonuses for charging. don't get bonuses for any second. But 
one attack, period. But it is instant death. So it's strength 10, AP 1, instant death. And then this one. Hands cut the cloud. Strength plus 1, strength 6, AP 2. Murder strike 4 up. So, yeah. so I mentioned Panoptica before, and I'll talk about that much at the very end, at like our synopsis. But why the Meridian Blade is free is beyond anyone's rationale. That was basically what I figured out very quickly, and this was before playing them. I don't know why Paragon Blades are 25 and Meridian Blades are free. It makes zero sense. And that's why I got FAQ'd. No, 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 it did Yes, not. it did. Yes, it did. Meridian Blades? Yeah. The points did. No, it did not. Yeah, it did. Hold on. Now you're making me look up all I games. Workshop. definitely looked this up. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Oh, no. well, well, yeah, while I'm looking up, but that's basically the tribute. It is it he's a super praetor um with AP2 weaponry at melee. He can dish out a lot of damage in melee. His shooting is You don't care not... about shooting, but that's exactly you don't take most, him for you. For exactly. most custodes, I don't think you even necessarily care about their no. shooting. There can be cases, but it's not really the So concern. Steve, where did they change it? Because it is not in the FAQ. The Unless you're talking about Panoptica, which is very different. No. Lieber and So while he looks that up, because I'm looking at it right now, they did not change it. It's still free. I, I don't again, everyone, no one knows why. Um what I say, what I say to people who are gonna start custodia is do not spam Meridian Blades. It is feel bad, and you there you make no friends that way. But it also does suck on the other hand. This is what I was talking about internal bounds that you have to basically crutch yourself heavily by, let's say, taking a Paragon Blade for 25 points. It, it's it's one of those, like, I don't know how well, to explain well, it. Well, no, it, it's simple. It's as you said. There, there's some of a lack of bounce. Now, we've always oh. found, or at least I've found in the time I've been in, and as well as anyone who's played 30K for a while, that the community seems to be able to attempt to self balance itself to an extent, you know, th th there's this concern of making sure that both sides have fun. Cause let's face it, there is unfun things and unfun combinations out of the, what I would call the main book or the main books, you know, the um, loyalists and trader books. The problem probably with Custode's part is that one, people will be more unfamiliar with it in general because they don't necessarily play against it as much, or maybe you have a player, or maybe you haven't seen a player yet, and it comes in. Um, and that's both for the people who are playing against it, as well as the people who are playing it. You might come and say, hey, I got this cool weapon, it seems neat, and you start using it, and maybe you don't realize at first how good it is, because it's just kind of like a standard thing that you can take in a variety of spots. And, and I free. think that's... Yeah, it's, yeah it's and I, I, I think that's some of the issue that you run into with some of these offshoot factions that, you know, if the balance doesn't quite hit perfect, and it can be tough to do, but the balance doesn't quite hit perfect, then you're going to have this sort of issue because people don't necessarily know it as well. Now, the good news, and we'll talk about this, it's very easy to not take Meridian Blades because no custodian plastic kit and there's no current resin kit that has the Meridian Blades for sale. So, for okay. example, when I made my Meridian Blades, I used Grey Knight Fal Fal Falcon. I know it's not Falcons. Falchians? Falchians, Falchians yes. Right? Yeah. I used Grey Knight Falchians. Falchians. Oh, Jesus. I used Grey Knight Falchians because I had access to them. But you're not, the, the new player is not going to be able to access this nor build it as quickly as possible. But they might because they see free. So it's a toss up. But since you're listening to this podcast, just realize Meridian Blades, for no reason, apparently, to me or anyone who. That I played custodians for years, I instantaneously, instantaneously realized how wrong that point score was. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Yes. All right. We we have talked about that guy for quite a while. So why don't we go on to the last HQ option then? So we'll go through the shield captain. So this is the cheaper guy. You can take this guy for sub 3,000 points and sub <laughs> 2,000 points or so if you want, because he's not the primark either. All right. He is 200 points. So he's, again, move eight, like um, pretty much all of them are. He's weapon skill six. He is fives for ballistic skill, strength, toughness, initiatives, attacks, all of that. He's got three wounds. Uh, is anyone not leadership 10 and two up save? Is that just the yes, same? Yes, the concept? normal troops. The normal troops are leadership nine. 
Got it. Okay. So that oh, is so I'm squishy, saying. so cowardly. Yeah, so cowardly. Actually, fun fact, they can be overrun. Yes. And <laughs> were you there for that when that happened to me? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, God, it hurts so much. It's yeah. embarrassing. And Unitype, obviously, he's a character. He has Skarmish. That's pretty standard for them to have the Skarmish. He gets a Guardian Spear. He has a Mizzacord. He has Arig Breastplate. Oh, sorry, Battle Plate, like we talked about, um, giving him a 2 up, 4 up. He has Frag, frag Grenades, Melta Bombs, and has the Air Strike. Um, he is bulky 3, so he's a little, little less thick than some of the others. He is relentless, it's stubborn, and, of course, a loyalist. I'm going to assume they're all loyalists, yes? Yes, yes. You, could, yeah, you don't have to say okay. that over and over. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just, I just wanted to check. Um, and he has some weapon options. He, so shooting wise he okay they, they talk about what it takes so obviously you can take the pistol or the shield he does not get the option for the transponder right uh-uh. um his other weapons is it the same list it looks yep. to be the exactly same exactly the same okay the only Good. difference is he's not eternal warrior and he has one mm-hmm. less wound that's yeah. literally the only difference yeah, so that and his inability to take the teleport array yep. is his big difference. But he also he's 100 points cheaper, and you're able to take him where you want. So, I mean, it's the kind of thing, it's a no-brainer for this guy, because he's your only choice if you're not doing at least 3,000. And there's a chance you want him even if you are doing larger, because if you're not trying to teleport, the other guy's just more expensive. You might not want to spend yes. the extra for the for the extra that you get. Mm-hmm. And the other guy is a 0 to 1. This, this guy's not so you could actually take more of these guys if you want Mm -hmm. all right well that was pretty fast but um long on the other ones but short on him because it's just for all these guys here it was just a lesser discussion (laughs) so that's going to take us to their elite section now again we're going to do we'll do these in batches of three does anyone have a particular one that they want to talk about i'll take whatever because i like all of them i'm not surprised by any of that steve you have a preference I'll take the Achilles because the FAC uh, fixed them. So I'll talk about that. I'll take the Achilles. Achilles. Okay. Achilles. Achilles. Yes. All right. Uh, Steve, do you want to take the header on guard then? Since they're the next sure, ones Sure. I'll, I'll take the header on guard. All right. So header and guard. For 225 points, you get a unit that is movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, t- and toughness 5, 3 wounds apiece with initiative 5, Four attacks, leadership 10, and a two-up save. You get three models off the bat. They have Meridian Swords. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> a Misericord, the Auric Warplate, Frag Grenades, and Melta Bombs. They are Skirmish-type infantry, which means they have a three-inch coherence. You get a plus one to their save while in cover. Sorry, improvement of cover saves by one. Yeah. Phrase that backwards. Um, they are Legion Custodes with Bulky 3, Chosen Warriors, Relentless, Stubborn, and loyalist um if the squad is six models or less they would take a coronas grav carrier as a dedicated transport you may increase the squad by up to seven additional models for 10 maximum models at 70 points each you get all the different weapon options that's the guardian spear for free the 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 pyrithite Pyrithite Spear for 15, yeah. Adrocyte for 10, <laughs> Sentinel Warblade for free, Guardian Axe for free, Solarite Power Gauntlet for 30, Solarite Power Talon for 10, two Solarite Power Talons for 15, or a Paragon Blade for 25, and as Dan says, why would you ever do that? Exactly. It's, um, it makes and those points but, are all the same as it was for the other character, so yes. it's nice and easy. They're not changing yep. points on different people for them. Yep. Um, one guy in the unit can swap out his Meridian Swords, for a Vexilla and either Mastercraft and Power Weapon of the lesser variety, or a Vexilla and Essential Warblade. And then it's either paying 15 points or 20 points for the upgrade. And finally, any model that doesn't have the Vexilla may take a Presidium Shield for 10 points a model. I should point out really quick, while someone goes, wait, he's got a 2-up, 4-up. No. Everyone else in the army, with the exception of the bikes and the Venatari, which are the cool Hawkmen that I love, um, every one of the army has a two up, six up, except for the so shield the captains. War two plate up, four is up. just a six. Yes, yes. Battle plate is a four. War Got plate it. is a six, and then I forgot what the Venatari have, but there are three up, six up instead. Okay, makes it really easy. So, so are these guys like just the best thing ever? Because yep, they come so, they, they come standard yes. with the swords yeah. and seem yep. pretty nice. 
So yes and no. Okay. Uh, so it de- <laughs> Oh boy, how do I explain this one? So one, it depends on the table. If you play on planet bowling ball with no cover and they have a two up six up and your opponent has <clears throat> sun killers, <laughs> they get immediately removed. There are three wounds, but a six up invulnerable will not save them. Mm. Um, and they will not make it to close combat. Um, if you play on a board with cover, you're hopping from cover to cover, but now you're only moving six inches. Um, but other than that, yeah, if they touch something, it evaporates. And again, it makes no sense why Meridian Blades are free in this. I I thought Meridian Blades were a little fun fl- fluff fact, for those who don't know. Meridian Blades are actually the blades they use when they're reloading their Guardian weapons. How the hell their Meridian Blades are better than their Guardian weapons? I, I, t- <laughs> I just don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's like, again, you have to, by taking Paragon Blades, you are actively making the unit worse for more points. And not yeah. for like a tiny bit of points. 25, 25 points each. a model is a lot. Yeah. So again, I don't know what they were thinking, but you know what? It's, I, I Maybe later on they well, change it. Well, I mean, for this unit, it's theoretically fine because that's kind of what they come with. Although my, my sort of thought there, and now I haven't looked through a lot of these other units. I know base things that they do, but I haven't studied them that well. Since... Is are Meridian Blades easier to take for other units? No, the only oh, okay. units that can that's take good. them are Heteron and the uh, Shield Captain. Okay, so that that's easy then. So the fact that these guys come base with it, they could have put points on it, and that doesn't change these guys because these guys already have it. So really, the only spots it needed to theoretically be not free is someone else. I'm not saying it, it, it's you know well and balanced, but I'm less concerned now the fact that it's not like I can just throw it everywhere. No, very Just true. don't spam these guys. Exactly. Um, which one thing we haven't talked about is look of models or distinction. How different Actually, do these guys look? So, or models? This is where we get interesting. Technically, you can play all plastic. There are no heteron guards. I should point out, by the way, there okay. are no such things as heteron guards. Although, what I will do is I will shoot you a picture, and you could put okay. it on the YouTube channel because there are two ways, three ways that you can do heteron guards. I took normal custodian guard and I added a cape to them, right? So nowhere else in my army but my heteron guard have the cloaks on them. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like the the you've seen them before, right? The yes. red cloaks on them. That's oh, yeah, my yeah, heteron guard. Okay. You they literally are very like they look the same, but you can see tell they're different because the cape is massive. The and by the way, my shield captains have capes, but they're the emblem is colored in silver. So that's how you mm. can t- pick them out from the unit. Other people like to use wardens as heteron guards, um, which wardens are the plastic custodians with axes and like uh, tabards. What's the crotch cloak called? Tabard. <laughs> tabard, yeah. So they have tabards on them. So but some people like using those. I Listen, it's personal preference. You can do whatever. I don't do it because I don't like the staticness of what the warden looks like. Okay. Um, but that's, that's, a, that's, again, that's a personal preference. That's not, you know... Um, if you really want to be fancy, though, you can actually convert. And what I'll do is I'll send it to you as I talk. So you could you can go ooh ah. Um, Let's do about that. You, yeah, no, no. You can convert the Alaris to look like it. Now it does take some work. You have to change the shoulder pads. You can't. You have to cut the shoulders a little bit so that the normal guardian arms can fit. But you can actually take Alaris and convert them to be header on guard. And in my opinion, I wish I'd known this. Because the way they look is like they, they, maybe it might also be the guy's paint scheme, to be quite honest. Oh, here it is. But you can get here. And I'll let, I'll let, I'll, po- I'll post it All while right. I talk. Are, um, are Alaris, though, are those a standard plastic kit or are they a forward? Yes, kit? standard plastic. Okay, now, good. you might run into some issues because right, technically in 40K, they're the Terminators, not the Aqualon Terminators that come later. But they're the, the they're the Terminators of 40K. So someone might be like, eh, they're Terminators in 40K. You're using, but there's no header on model. And as you can see, with the shield and the Paragon blades, I mean, again, he'll hopefully Dave like puts it on YouTube. Right, so I'll put it up there. Yeah, it's up there. Yeah, but um, that you know that looks like a elite unit of custodians. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So just wanted to point that out there. That's a little bit more expensive wise though, <laughs> like heavily more expensive wise. Um, well, I always had the sort of thought of yeah. If there is no model in existence, 
I don't care what you use for it if you can make it look cool and reasonably appropriate. Exactly. They, they no, don't have one. So use a 40K model. Who cares? You know? Well, all this, all the normal stuff is 40K models anyway. But yeah. that being said, like... They haven't yeah, changed is... in 10,000 years. It's not like other legions yeah, where, exactly. like, it's really changed. It's not different. The... Header on guard literally have no description other than they're super elite and powerful. Yeah. So that's, that's literally their description. So roll with it. Have fun with this one. All right. But I mean, they're good, and these guys do seem really cool. Yes. Um, I, 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 the, I have no problem with the army. I'm just, I know when looking at it, I just, I don't want to do like gold like that. One, I, I would gold. feel, com- <laughs> but one, if I did the gold, I feel compelled to do Namatop metal, and I don't want to do that full army. I Two, I'd probably do it in some sort of, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not even sure what color scheme, but it would be something very heretical, I'm sure. <laughs> Actually, fun uh, fact, custodians, yeah. people who like say, oh, it's only gold. That's actually one of the biggest untruths. Uh, custodians actually have multiple colors in the heresy dependent right. on – because Oramite, fun fact, is gold because that's what Oramite means in Latin. Uh, but it's dyeable. So like Shadow Keepers uh, or the progenitors to Shadow Keepers, I forgot their names, are, have black armor. So um, that's what I would do. I would do black have, armor. Yeah, Shadow Keeper. I love uh, oh man, they have a I still have the old book. They have a beautiful Shadow Keeper with like silver filigree and like purple hair. Oh mwah, beautiful. No, that, uh, but that's the scheme teal. I would do. They have teal, they have white, um, or uh, tan instead of white. Um, but yeah, they, they actually do have multiple, multiple um uh schema. So this is not something where it's like, oh, it's only gold. No, 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 no. It, it actually uh-huh. is. Which that especially means if this is an army you're interested in, but you don't want to do gold because that's just not your thing. Or um, I'm not huge on tons of metal look. That's just me personally. If other people like it, cool, but that's just not me. So the fact, especially in heresy, that there's these other, if you're trying to go for historical, like I want to be somewhat accurate on my paint schemes, you have a variety of other paint schemes. So you can really kind of get out there with it. I like that. Yeah, you go nuts with these. All right. Why don't we take a look at these uh, really expensive Terminators? Oh, my God. It, <laughs> yeah. All right. So the uh, Aqualon Terminator squads, 290 points for three guys. They're 90 points a guy. <laughs> so they beat out the second most expensive Terminator that I've seen, which is the Death Rats at 70 each. So let's see how these guys compare. They're going to be better, I'm sure. Um, move seven, so a little bit slower. Um, they're going to be heavy, so they will have um, some of the similar problems there. But... They are, of course, are fives across the board, except the wounds being three, attacks being three, ten leadership, two up save. So standard stat line other than a little bit of a different move. Um, they have Lastrum Stormbolter. So what's a Lastrum Stormbolter? Ah, I completely forgot. Oh, because I told you I'd talk about the it when we get to the Yeah, end. you walked yeah. away, and you didn't think you had to talk, and now you do have to talk. Yeah, I was like, I'm Tell looking for Tell me about the Stormbolter. Get back stupid, here. Where are you going? Look at this stupid Are you banner. changing out your painting water? No, it's the stupid ogre banner. I put it somewhere and I have no idea where. Um, so the last room stole bolter is one of my favorite weapons, actually. Okay. Um, I, it doesn't justify their points, by the way. I'm going to point that out there. But it actually is a really fun weapon. So any of the last room weapons, they come in three variants. So I'll kind of talk about them in a, as a as a whole, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that way we don't have to get back to go back and forth. So the last room bolt weapons, they are bolt weapons. There's three of them. There's the storm bolter, the bolt cannon, and then the, the twin last room bolt cannon, which is found in the biggest plain doofy looking model. They have a last room storm bolter. It's 24 inches, strength five, AP four, assault three shred. So it's a three shot. I think a heavy bolter is four, right? In, in heavy bolter is four. Yes. Yeah. So it's a three shot heavy bolter with shred. At 24 inches. Not bad, actually. No, that's actually very good. Yeah, it provides a lot of DACA. Uh, The bolt cannon, that's found on the bikes when we get to them later. That's 36 inches, strength 6 AP4, heavy 4 shred. So you get strength 6 and an additional shot and 36 inch range. And then the twin last room bolt cannon. Yeah. A little bit better. Um, And the twin last room bolt cannon is exactly the same, except instead of heavy 4, it's heavy 8. Ta-da. It's twin. Super easy. Exactly. Okay. Um, these guys have the Solarite Power Gauntlets. Those are those Strength 10 and AP1 stuff that we've been yeah. talking about. And I'm they, ready. so their Aquan Terminator armor, what's special about okay. their Terminator ready? armor? It's, it's going to be, it's going to be shocking. Are you ready for this? It's a two up, two four. up four. Okay. So they, they are cataphracty without using that word because cataphracty has other meanings behind it. Yes. Okay. They still are heavy and skirmishers. They can't run. No. Uh, 
but they move seven, which is nice. <laughs> like, yeah, they and, and they're not restricted from sweeping though, because that's the. Um, that's oh, is the, it really? I didn't know it's cataphracty. Oh, it's the cataphracty that. rule, right? The cataphracty oh. is what keeps you from sweeping. I can't remember. I don't think it's heavy. <laughs> I think it's heavy. No, no, no it's, it's yeah. Well, no, it's not. So. It's it's not the heavy rule that stops you from sweeping. It stops you yeah, from the cataphracty. Oh, it's cataphracty. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Fun fact, they had that in the last edition too. The, the Terminator armor plate was like an entire two paragraphs of words because mm-hmm. it was cataphracty plate, but none of the bad, the bad things. It was just the funniest thing to read because they could have just put cataphracty plate, but, you know. They, uh, no, <laughs> I understand why they did it that yeah. way. But, but that's all, right, all it is. Um, these guys are bulky for so a little bit bigger. Chosen warriors, so any of them can take or give uh, challenges. They're relentless, stubborn, of course, loyalists. As long as you don't have any more than four, you can take up to seven. So you can take a 10-man unit. But as long as you got no more than four, you can take a, a Corona's craft carrier as a dedicated. Oh, he's got seven more of them. They're 90 points a guy. Just bring that max squad. That's hilarious. I'm not saying it would be good, but it'd be very hilarious. Um, you can exchange your power gauntlets for the power talon if you're worried about initiative. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, but it, at, at the fact that you are a toughness five, it's going to be tough to be doubled out in close combat. I'm not saying it's not going to happen when you get there, but it's a lot tougher because the number that you see most often is the eight slash sometimes certain things get to nine. Getting above that's a little bit harder to see. Um, and any of them can switch out their last room bolt, storm bolter for either a twin length. A Darethic Destructor. What the heck? What is that? Ah, that's the that, that's what we explained that one before. The Twin Link uh, Drathic is the Got it. Strength 5 AP3. Gets hot, but instant death. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, but gets hot when your Twin Link is bad. They have Infernus. Yeah. Fi- they could switch out to Infernus Fire Pike. This is the part where usually Dan tells us what that is. Or oh, the Infernus. I, I, it I, you know I what's funny? Because I keep it. It's funny because I'm like, oh, did we talk about that? No, we did not. It's a no. flamer. It's a, it's a torrent flamer essentially it's a strength six ap6 heavy one torrent nine inches so you get a 17 and a half inches right about that yeah and a half inches yeah so about 17 and a half inches for a strength six flavor or they could take another power talent so they can remove both weapons and get a pair of the talons um i think these guys are cool Uh, now there's two different sides we can go with um are they good or are they cool? I think at the end of the day, I think this army has a huge amount of strength to it already. So I think the idea of, you know, trying to, not that we should always necessarily be trying to take the best, but is it the best unit to take in, say, your elite slot or for the points? Probably no. In reality, yeah, probably so, no. They're super expensive. Let, it's okay. So again, because I play custodies a lot mm-hmm. and that's kind of an understatement. They were my first army. So at 290 points, they're sadly... They're again two points. So the problem is one, they're three attacks, which an entire army of four attacks, you might be okay. Maybe they have the Misericordia, right? You know, Trajan, you know, they, they got a Misericordia, so they're bumped up to four. No, they don't get the Misericordia. In fact, it's on the model. Some of them actually have it molded into the model. It's not even glued, it's yeah, molded it. into the model. And no, <laughs> it's not there, which would have, by the way, bumped them to four attacks, which would have been interesting. You know, they're less attacks, but oh, look, they've got a Misericordia four. Um, that's just one salt point, but that's a different, that's not even a rule thing. That's just more of me being salty. For 290 points, the problem is unless you teleport them in, using the teleport homer at 3,000 points or Trajan Dolores, they're going to walk across the board. And the problem with that is they're going to die exactly like um, Grave Wardens die, which is mass AP2 fire. Um, because they're basically Grave Wardens that are more expensive, essentially is what it comes down to it. You probably mean Death Shroud, but I get the idea. Oh, Death Shroud, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, it's all the same, yeah. yeah. Well, walking um, Terminators always potentially have a problem, yeah. depending on what and your you opponent brings. You could put them in a Coronis, the transport, but when we get to that, you don't because it's super expensive and it's not an assault vehicle. So you get out, you shoot, which is cool, but you don't do anything. So it's it's you kind of have to deep strike them or bust. And at 3K... They're pretty good, but then you run into the problem of why not just take a tear on? Yeah. It's, well, it's, what, uh, yeah. What I think it boils down to is, you know, t- to one, be able to take units that you think are fun and units yes. that are cool 
And to be able to say that, hey, you know what? Yeah, when I bring a bunch of these guys, it's less fun for for other people. I'm going to take some of these guys because they're expensive. They eat up some points. But yeah, if they do reach someone or they reach something heavy, they have a strength and weapon. That's great. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and these guys actually have a very cool look and they have a model. Oh, they do. So. I love them. Like I said, they should be. And again, because I never so Dave knows this. I don't do math. At no, all. you don't. The, the but, listeners know that. They've heard you. Weirdly, but weirdly enough, I'm really good with like balancing. I, I, um, I, like I'm, I'm pretty good at being a fair and balanced person, which is very weird. They should be around 280, with the additionals being 80, which saves you roughly around 20 points already. And then it saves you to get up to five. It saves you about 30. So it saves it's about a 50 to 60 point save of points, which is enough for one extra guard, which doesn't seem like a lot. But it also means that there's a 60 point differential in building your list, which is a lot better, in my opinion. They need to be just slightly lower. Well, so so here's the question though: no. Is it that they need to be lower, or do other things need to be higher in points? It depends. Both, yes. <laughs> well, okay, so here's yes. what I mean by that. Yes, if I the know. The problem I is, oh, other stuff is better than this one unit. Okay, if the other things are problematic to some extent, and we can have that discussion at the end. Yes, exactly. If that's the issue, then everything should go up, so, and maybe these guys as are a slight, As a possible. slight side note, as a slight side note, I'm also coupling this with Meridian Blades being 25 points, which makes Heteron, you know, now the appropriate cost level. So okay. now you have a choice of Paragon Blades or Solarite Fist, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I'm doing that. But that's where my mind is. But they're still cool. I, they look awesome. They are chunky. So for people who have yeah, never seen models. these models in person, first of all, they're on 50 mil bases. They're not actually on 40s. And they're big. Like, I cannot. The, you think, like, who, who are the chunky? You think the Praetor in the starter box is chunky? These guys are massive. Yeah. But they, they're great. I do like them. Yeah. No, they're the kind of thing. I mean, honestly, I think if you're playing this army, you should play, you should, you should always run what you think will be fun. But I think especially when you're playing a, a army that's away from the main line, I think then you should push it even more because people aren't going to be familiar with the stuff that you do and the sorts of things you do. Very true. And feel, it's going to feel really odd to fight against. And if you don't know what you're doing, if your opponent doesn't know what they're doing, it might not be fun. So yeah, bring all the units that you think are cool and exactly. fun especially if they're maybe maybe not quite up to uh the same level exactly all exactly. right um so talk about this particular contemptor all right so before i begin i do want to point out this was fact the and it was fi- fa- bleh, i can't speak it was fact in a way that it just fixed a really stupid gw rule like when i like um basically they mistyped something so okay I just want to point that out. So when I get to it, I'm I'm going to explain where the change is, and then from there we'll move on because it doesn't change the rules at all. It literally just changes one thing. So the Achilles Dreadnought is first of all an amazing looking dreadnought. It's the one with the gigantic spear. It is movement eight, uh, weapon skill six, which differentiates it from the other dreadnoughts. By the way, I should point out yeah, uh, ballistic yeah. skill five, strength eight, toughness seven, six wounds, initiative four, tax four, leadership ten, two up save. And it is a dreadnought. Um, it it's armed with an Achilles Dread Spear, which is the 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 actual spear. Uh, it's armed with a Corvée Laz Pulsar. All right, we had a had a pause there for a moment, but Dan's back to uh, yes. tell us more about this guy. So it's it's got an Achilles Dread Spear with an inbuilt uh, ca- uh, Corvée Laz Pulsar, which we'll talk about mm-hmm. later. He's got a Gravis Power Fist, and this is what they changed. So he has a Gravis Power Fist with inbuilt Laster Storm Bolter. The Gravis Power Fist and the Last Room Storm Bolter are no longer linked. So essentially, he has a Gravis Power Fist, and then bullet point, he has a, a Last Room Storm Bolter. Does that make sense? Two of them. Yeah, well, so, so why does that matter so much that so, it's not inbuilt? I'll, I'll get that in one something. moment. Yeah, so I'll get it. He oh. also has an Atomatic Deflector. The reason they changed that is because <laughs> in the options, you will notice that, first of all, he can replace his Achilles Dread Spear for uh, another Gravis Power Fist, right? Awesome. A Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought may replace any inbuilt Last Room Storm Bolter on a Gravis Power Fist with one of the following. The problem with that wording is he has two of them on the model. Uh, uh, w- rules as written, that means he only had one wrist gun. That o- And that literally means that the only time he had two wrist guns is if he had two Gravis Fists, which makes no sense. <laughs> so what they did was they uncoupled it. Ooh, that's a good word. 
I don't even know how. Ooh, ooh, fancy. They uncoupled it from the uh, last from Stormbolter and the Grab's Power Fist. So now you can replace the last the the spear with a ga- with a Power Fist if you want. And if you want to, you can now replace one or both of the last from Stormbolters with either a Twin Link to Drathic Destructor or Infernus Incinerator. Okay, that's what it boils down to. Rules is it basically rules is written. You could not literally take a double wrist gun, which made no sense. So now it's uncoupled. He has two wrist guns, a spear, a fist, and you can remove the spear for another fist. That's all it boils down to. All right. So, so tell us about this yes. uh, dread spear. So the last from Storm Bolter, we already know. Yes. Uh, I'll talk about the Corvée Laz Pulsar since it's right there. Okay. I don't want to move too far. The Corvée Laz Pulsar is very simple. It's a three-shot Laz cannon at AP3, though. So it's it's uh, 24 inches, strength 9, AP3, heavy 3. It's a three shot AP3 LAS cannon at 24 inches. So That's it's very, very simple gun. It's very, yeah, it's very good, very simple. I don't really use it that often. I kind of run him. Um, the the Infernus Incinerator is basically a strength six AP4 heavy one weapon. And the Adrathic Destructor is what we talked about before. Now, salty point number 47 with the Custodes book. So the fist is a fist. Uh, for those who play Contemptors, it's exactly the Gravis Power Fist is a Gravis Power Fist. It's a what strength nine brutal strength three. Strength nine AP two brutal three. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Now you might be saying, "Oh, that's cool. What does this spear do then? That's the size of a goddamn like Land Raider. Why? Wow, it must be amazing." All right, strength twelve. Okay, AP two, amazing. Two handed. Okay, Exo Shock four up. Yeah. So. That's it. So he's armed with each weapon. So yes. if I need to be brutaling my way through people, I'll use the power fist. If I'm going against the vehicle, I'm going to use the dread spear. The That's reason great I'm salty. The reason I'm salty is the spear should have just been the power fist. And so okay, you have a contemptor, Dave, right? I do. You, have know, a you, you I know the size of a power fist, right? How big and thick it is, right? Yeah. Now look at the contemptor's hands. The, it, they're so small and tiny. <laughs> They're so slow Wait, and tiny. So, so huh? your problem is that when you look at his hand, you don't think it's it, it's enough to cause the damage. That it does. No, that's and your problem. I, yeah, and so the problem I have though is like ninety percent of the time you're using the fist instead of the super cool lance that he has. I think they could have just literally made the lance brutal three, get rid of the fist, because I don't know where they even got the option to remove the the lance from. That was never an option in the first place. I, I don't yeah. know where. I, Anyway, point is, that's just something that irked me. Because <laughs> 90% of the time you use the fist and not the really stupid cool spear that he's armed with. But whatever. Rules be rules. Um, but no, he's a cool... So back to actually talking about it. He's a really cool unit. 250 points for a solid Contemptor at Weapon Skill 6. I mean, he's good. He's expensive. Hopefully he doesn't get shot on the way in. Um, and he oh. can't be taken into Talon. But... He hurts what he hits. Yeah. I mean, you, you always have to worry about something on their way in, but, you know, Contemptor kind of stuff is, you know, is strong. Um, what does he have for an invul save, though? None. It's like it's an automatic deflector. So it's a two of five. Yeah, up. He doesn't say that. Yeah. yeah. At, at to oh, sorry, deflect. now I see. Yeah. Sorry, I, I missed yeah, that. Right? Oh, the, at to yeah. So he's basically a Contemptor. Yeah, he doesn't get instant deflect. death. It's a two of five up. It's, it's what the Contemptors have. Okay, that's fine. I, I missed originally when I was looking oh, no, at it. His right. third piece, yeah, I just didn't see it. Okay. Um, I mean, no, I, th- I think he's good. He, he's, yeah, he's more good. He's... points than a Contemptor, but you get a little bit extra, and you come base with both decent weapons in terms of range, but also good weapons in certain melee, where a lot of times the Contemptors kind of have to go one way or the other, or you mix, where this guy gets both at the same time. Yep. That's about it. All right, he's cool. All right, so that puts us to start going towards some troop choices. Now There's again, we have <laughs> yes, it's two, and then then the dedicated. So transport. does yeah, yeah, the transport. Does anyone have a particular thing that they want to talk about as we get into this next set? I'll have you guys talk about the troops because I wanted to preface something after the troops are said, but before the tank is talked about. Uh, Steve, do you care which troop? Does it matter which shiny boy? Uh, Steve wants the shields because that's where Marcus Aurelius originally started. <laughs> so I want the sentinels. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Yeah. 
Um, wait, so you, you're doing Sentinels then? Yeah, Sentinels. All right. <laughs> I'll take care Damn of the All right, so Custodian Guard. So um, these guys are 150 points for three of them. They are the li- line unit because they're coming out of the troops for this skirmish as they've been. Stat line is essentially the same one. It's fives. It's move eight, fives across the board, except their wounds in this case is two. Their attacks is four. And the leadership now is nine instead. So they still have that two up safe, but they're one less in that leadership. Um, they have Guardian Spears, Misericords, the Arc War Plate. So that's the two up, six up. Frag Grenades, Melt a Bomb. So a lot of the war gear, base war gear is very, very similar between a lot of these units. Yes, These sir. guys are bulky three, Chosen Warriors, which almost everyone has. Stubborn, Relentless, all that sort of stuff is very, very common. Um, if there's no more than six, they can take the Grav Carrier as they're dedicated. They're 45 points a guy. If you want to add more, you can get up to seven more. So you can take a full squad of 10. Um, they can exchange their Guardian Spear, which we talked about, for Pyrex Spears for 15, um, Adracite Spears for 10, or they can go straight to the Guardian Axe. And one of them can change it out for, essentially, like I said, the Vexilla with the Magicraft to Power Weapon or the Sentinel Warblade. Um I, I feel, because I've seen your army, and I feel this, to me, this is true, that when you're kind of just looking at it as someone who doesn't know, a lot of this stuff reads very, very similar. Now, we could make the same argument for very space marines, because like you have a very similar stat line, and what I'm changing out is weapons. But I feel there's a, a bigger difference in the look, and I think part of it is because you got a lot of these guys with, you know, their spears and they have all essentially the same sort of armor and the same sort of pieces on there. So, I mean, but they're also some of the cheapest options and this is an army that needs bodies. You don't have a lot of wounds, but you absolutely need bodies and at toughness yes. five. Again, it's hard to be doubled out in sort of this, um, the, the natural environment that you're going to see. So now actually I said, I was going to say this after Steve talks about Sentinels, but I'm going to mention it now because you actually hit the nail on the head a little bit about the cheapness. One thing that is what I talk, this is where the external balance, not internal. Actually, this goes internal and external. The immediate thing I noticed was if you notice the stat line, they have four attacks, which is the same as the elite units, even more than the Aqualon, but it's the same. They basically have the same stat line as our elite units minus one wound. But their cost ratio is not reflecting that. They are exceptionally cheap. 150 yeah. with 45 extra is nothing for a movement eight, eight P2 strength six spear, right? Which then I had to do math, which I hate doing, but there's a reason <laughs> why. Uh-oh. Ironically, when you play other Space Marine Legions, you know, you spam elite units and you're going to get a very harsh game, right? Like the, the elite units of, of Marines are really great, right? Ironically, with Custodes, the very hard list to beat, almost like the you can't touch this list, is actually just taking 60 custodian guard. Taking six full units of 10 guard, all with spears, or maybe you could throw in some axes, so like two axes or five axes and five spears per unit, right? And taking that for sub, I think it was 2,000 points. I I think it's sub 2,000. I, I have to do the math again. But essentially, that kind of spam list is unbeatable. And it's weird and kind of stupid because you need line troops in a game. So you're playing this weird game of, I want to take line troops, but I don't want to take so much of them that it becomes unfun for my opponent. So I'm going to take some Heteron, which is such a weird way to put that. But that's what it actually is. You're playing the game of, all right, let me fit some aqua on here. I think I could explain it, like why the stats feel like that. So if you look at the right. stat line, it's a, they're basically a Terminator squad, right? Slightly worse than vulnerable, right? But it's like a Terminator squad, and Terminators start at 30, 35 points, right? Yeah. Um, but then they're gaining weapon skill and ballistic skill and strength. And toughness. And that toughness bump makes us that most of the, ah, I'm going to instantly kill some Space Marines weapon options don't instantly kill them. Um, yeah. And they get four attacks base each compared to like an initiative five. So yeah. a, a spearman, a, a, just a normal spear guard 
charges, five attacks. Touches two bases, six attacks. Nemesis, seven attacks. Seven attacks on a normal dude that's run six AP2 is not okay. Um, yeah. For 100, for 45 points, essentially. Um, so just really quick, realize that it's a weird game of take them because you need line and you need troops, but take other things to play down. Like, so it's, it's such a weird say to take elites to, to play a lesser powerful army, right? Am I, am I crazy in saying that? Like, it sounds weird. No, no, because the most people, when, when you think of a, a space Marine Legion, the troops, though necessary, and they can have good features, they can do good things for you. They're usually not the power part. In some legions, a little bit more than others, obviously. But in general, they're not the thing that really bring the power. It's your elites are fast or maybe heavies. Where here with the custodian guard, it feels like everything here can bring a good power. Yeah. So need, if these guys are cheaper, and, and you're a bit off on your points, it's a full squad of 10 with no special upgrades. It's 465. So you could bring four in two four of them in 2,000 points or six of them in 3,000. So when you're talking about got six, it, you're probably it. thinking about 3,000 point game. Because you could fit them and your leader and still be a little bit under. Yeah, Not by much, but you would be... And it's like, okay. oh, you need power fists or version of the power fists? Take the axe. It's free. You know? Now, we haven't talked about the Sentinels yet, but I'm just going to kind of spoil it for Steve. Sorry, Steve. They're exactly the same amount of points with the exception of paying more for extra abilities. So... Anyway, I'll let Steve talk about it, but that's just, I wanted to put that out there because you hit the nail on the head with the cheapness. Yeah. Um, really quick, I know I mentioned it before, most community, um, not most, but the community um, Panoptica who puts out the community rules, uh, which I'll probably be using in the store because it internally balances custodians while fixing a lot of the problems, has actually just reduced the custodian attacks to three, which doesn't seem like a lot as a fix, but it actually does matter because the loss of a whole entire attack. But um, yeah. just wanted to point that out real quick. All right. Um, so yeah. Steve is going to start talking about Sentinels while Dan stops hitting his table. No, I'm not. Wait, I'm not hitting it. I'm not even touching my I'm, table. You, I, or maybe it's the way your headphones are leaning or something. I hear a sound. Hmm. Is your headphone wire touching your microphone or hitting it? Uh, it is. It is kind of hitting it. So That's I gotta, exactly I, what's I, happening. Not, I can it. watch. That'll do it. Yeah, I'm watching the actual tiny little bumps that I'm going to go through that's and so try to weird. remove. So and it causes weird. me to have more work in the busiest work week that I have. <laughs> I mean, just talk about assi- assign, assign less homework in finals. It's fine. Um, yeah, Sentinel Guard Squad. It's You've probably seen this before. It's exactly like the other squad, except they have Presidium Shields and Sentinel Warblades instead of having Guardian Spears. Um, Shocked. And so their weapon options become, um, you can swap out the Warblade with sent, uh, Solarite Power Talons for 10 points, or Solarite Power Gauntlet for 30 points. And then you could give up your shield on one guy for the Vexilla. So Dan, what is the Talon versus the Gauntlet again? Talon is a light, it's a strength 5 AP2 Shred Claw, essentially. Sick. So, lightning Claws. Cool. Lightning Claws cool. with yeah. strength 5 AP2. Excellent. Um, and the Solarite Power Gauntlet is Strength 10 AP 1, Yee. essentially. Powerful. It yeah. is. It's it's a good squad. Um, I should point out, again, the big difference is the shield now is just a flat 5-up save. It is no longer a plus 1 in bull, which ironically doesn't affect anything other than the actual HQ, but they have a 2-up, f- 5-up, essentially, is All what right. it is. But. The, the, so, the Solarite Power Gauntlets are fun. Like, that's a cool thing. Not for 30 but points. But like, I was going to say, not for 30 <laughs> no. on a two-wound model that's already Which costing why you, you 40 do it. That is true. If, you wanna, if, <laughs> if you're worried about, like, you're beating your friends too much, take a few of these and be like, this unit's going to kill you if they get there. But I have so many less things because I have a full unit. I have such <laughs> have a full unit less of custodes because I took a, a giant weapon I, on this guy. They will obliterate we, whatever so, they look at. You're going to laugh but. when we get to it. But there's actually a 60 point uh, unit in this book. And I laugh because it two fists equal a tank in this unit, in, in this book, which makes me like laugh hysterically every time. Uh, speaking of uh, tanks. Yeah, oh, yeah, speaking of tanks, the Coronas Grav Carrier. Oh, yeah. I wished this Grav Carrier was so much better. So the Coronas Grav Carrier, 
looks cool. Um, I don't like the look. I know people hate me when I say that. You just said I, you thought it looks cool, but you no, also no, no, hate I, the I, look. What? It's, it's, I go back and forth. It's just so chunky. So I have to – this thing is the size of a Kratos, if not a little bigger. It is – If it, it's a it, lot of big boys, it needs to be big. Yeah, it's, it's – uh, fun fact, uh, it actually is sized correctly. You could fit a custodian with the base inside, which is – Kind of hilarious. Anyway, 180 points. So it's actually kind of cheap-ish. It's it's uh, we'll go through its stats and we'll decide yeah. if it's cheap. So move 16, ballistic skill five. It is front armor 13, side armor 12, rear armor 10, uh, five hull points, 18 capacity. So at most it'll carry six custodians. Because each each one's three essentially. Aquilons are four, but um the, yeah, in general it. they're three. Yeah. In general, yeah. It is anti-grav, which is kind of cool. Um anti graph for those who don't know, ignores terrain and stuff. It's, it's actually pretty cool. It's got a twin laster and bolt cannon in the front, um, which is that really cool nose gun you see in the picture. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the strength six, um, eight shots, uh, yep. shred, strength six. Yeah. And it's yep. got the twin linked arachnus blaze cannons. Ah, oh, all these guns. I love them. All right, we'll talk about that. It also has a flare shield. So it is actually armor 14 in the front. Um, and I think mm-hmm. minus two to blast weapons. He said yes. Yeah, it's it's minus yeah. one unless it's blast, then it's minus two. Okay. It's a legion custody, so if you charge with it, um you get an additional attack. Lol. Um <laughs> it's got power of the machine spirit, it's got deep strike outflank, and its access point is in the rear. So the good news. Um it has the arachnus bla- blaze cannon. The bad news, it's not an assault vehicle. Um, meaning if you get out, you're kind of stuck there for a turn. Yeah. So just realize that, that you can't assault out of it, which does actually suck. Um, but the Arrakis Blaze Cannon, oh, let me get to it real quick. I, gotta, I always yeah, forget whether it's a this, this thing is weapon. huge, though. So it, it's it massive. should be able to hide them pretty well. Um, No, because it's anti grav. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. The anti grav is what kills you on the, because anti grav literally means. Ah, oh, see, right. we have the Arachnus Blaze Cannon. And I'm probably just going to go through all of them because, again, the differences between them are negligent. They're pretty much all the same stats. Negligible, with the, not negligible. Negligible, sorry. Ooh, whoops. So the Arachnus Blaze Cannon uh, comes in about, uh, I think it's four different varieties. Uh, you have the small version, Arachnus Blaze Cannon, the enhanced Arachnus Blaze Cannon, the Arachnus Heavy Blaze Cannon, and then the Arachnus Magna Blaze Cannon. Um, they go 18, 24, 48 inches. Um, the Arachnus Blaze Cannon is strength 8. The enhanced and heavy are strength 9. And the Magna is strength 10. And they're all AP1. What makes them interesting is that they're all lance weapons. So for example, the Arachnus Blaze Cannon on the tank is heavy 2, lance, exoshock 6. The Enhanced Arachnus is Heavy 4, Lance, Exoshock 6. Um, the Heavy Blaze is Heavy Strength 9, Heavy 2, Lance, Exoshock. And then the, the Magna Blaze Cannon, that's on the Lord of War. That's just Destroyer 2. <laughs> it's, that just it, it melts. Um, but what makes it cool is the Lance. So this one is Strength 8, which might not wound a Land Raider, but because it's Lance, for those who don't know, Lance reduces the armor to 12. Unless you're underneath, and then you're 11 or 10. It doesn't make you 12. But it makes anything that is armor reduce, 12 or... It ahead. reduces them down to 12. Exactly. Just way to put it, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, your last, your Arrakis Blast Cannons can actually touch a Land Raider on a 4-up. Your Heavy Blaze Cannons can touch a last can, uh, Land Raider on a 3-up. Um, the Magna Blaze Cannon is just a Titan killer. Um, but yeah, it's just a really cool, neat weapon to shoot. And it's also Strength 8 AP1. So I've actually just used it to pop sometimes a Terminator. Like just try to insta-kill one Terminator, which doesn't seem like a good use, but hey, it works. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you got nothing better to shoot at, if you don't have a vehicle to take down, yeah, it's good against Terminators. Yeah. It's just a good, it's an overall good gun is the nicest way to put that. Um, But yeah, that's, that's the Coronas. It's, it's okay. It's a little... So here's here's my thought on that. Yeah. It, you know, so yes, it's not an assault vehicle, but it can deep strike or outflank. So if you have these concerns about my custodians have to walk across the board and they'll never make it because it's going to take them three turns, let's say, this could get them there essentially Very in one true. term. The problem 
is that when you're deep striker outflanking, and correct me if I'm wrong, I have not seen anything base in the army that can help them control when they come in. No. So you might not. come in turn four, not go till five. Now you're kind of screwed. But like if you come in turn two, charging three, that might be the same case anyway. And I'm, I'm taking one less round of shots potentially. And I got a vehicle to both get in the way to an extent as well as put some shots down. So I, no, no, you're very I'm, true. Yeah, I'm not no, saying it's right. like an auto clue in any way, but I, I don't mind it. Um, for what it does, or maybe this thing carries some of your troops that your goal is to get them far into the board. I'm not trying to assault. Yeah, they're going to go sit on the objective and they'll just fight anyone who comes close enough. It is a cool unit. Uh, Again, looks wise, I go back and forth all the time. And it's so funny because I've seen it in person. It looks kind of goofy. It's kind of big. But I'll be honest with you, like it's massive. Like it is stupidly big. Yeah, it's the paint that I don't like. I don't mind the model itself. I don't like the classic colors that they do, the red and the gold. I agree. Yeah. I, I see think, it, to uh, me the person who had it uh, uh, ran it as a teal, like he painted a teal. Yeah. And it, it was beautiful. It was be- it was like teal with golden filigree. It was mm. cool. Cool. I wish I took a picture of it. I think I, I might have it, but it's so far back in my phone. That's all right. All right. Um, I guess that does it for the troops. This yep. puts us on to some fast attack pieces. Yep. I call. Um, I'll do the Venatari. That that one. I love doing the. Yeah, the Venatari are gonna be great. Okay. Uh, Steve, do you have a preference of um, what type of fast bike you talk about? I'm gonna talk about the attack speeder squadron because I have a funny memory from last edition with them. And they're actually okay, super so dangerous. that's the second thing. Got it. <laughs> yep. So I got the Agamatis uh, jet bike squad. Okay. Um, all right. So I think that jet bike squad is up first. I looked, just looked at the bottom. I didn't realize the. Oh, I guess it's a continuation of the same picture that they were that different. All right. So these guys, there's three of them. Um, there are 265 points for three of them. They are move 16 because I said they are jet bikes. Um, they have the standard stat line. There are three wounds in this case. They have a single attack. Um, There's a reason why. Okay, good. <laughs> There's That's a reason good. why. I was, I was kind of confused, but okay, we'll yeah, get to I, that. I, everyone um, was until they realized. Got it. Uh, leadership nine and a three-up save. Um, they are, of course, skirmish. They're anti-graph for these particular bikes. They have a solarite power lance. What there does the power lance do? Yeah, there it is. The reason okay. they're one attack, ladies and gentlemen, is because the solarite power lance, which we haven't talked about yet, even though it's a solarite no. weapon, strength 10, AP 1, melee, two-handed, sudden strike 3. Remind me what sudden strike does, because you're it doing a dramatic you charge, oh, sorry. charge. If you charge, it's plus 3 initiative. Got it. So if they charge, that's two attacks each at strength 10, AP 1, initiative 8. And if you're yeah, yeah. a nemesis okay. unit, if you're a nemesis unit, that's three attacks each. That's why they gave them one attack. Okay, yeah. Which I agree with. No, no. I, I After that, I do agree. And I'm assuming the jetpack has some guns, so it helps out as well. But we'll get yes. to that. Oh, yeah, that second. was another misprint. That was an FAQ. They added the gun to the war gear. It's actually okay, in good. the... Uh, ironically, it's in the item list. Like, replace this gun with this. But oh, okay. it's not in the war gear, which is hilarious. All right. So they have, Miza, they have misacords, of course. They have melta bombs. They have the Arc Demi Plate, which is them getting essentially a three-up save instead. Yep. So on this jet bike, what are the what's special so, about this jet bike? It, nothing. It just has like weapons wise, or <laughs> is, is there any particular special rule on it? So I guess no. it would be weapon or anything else like that. Nope. It gets uh, it, there are special rules with it, like it gets move sixteen. It's anti grav. Um, is it what a Lastrum bolt cannon? I'm reading. Yes, it's a Lastrum bolt cannon, right. which is the four shot. Strength, it's the four shot heavy bolter with shred at strength six, though. At strength six, okay. All right, so and otherwise, a, it seems like a essentially a normal sided jet bike or bike sort of thing. They yep. hammer at one, they can deep strike. Yep, yep, okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so these guys are chosen warriors, they're relentless, stubborn, hammer wrath one, which their bike gives it gives to them, them anyway. Yeah. Um, deep strike and outflank, which they kind of had as well. You can take seven more of them, so you could take a squad of 10 of these guys. Um, they're 85 points a guy. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't. I already tried to. I already did How the math and I was like, you, never again. You, if nothing else in your entire life, just talk about how you want to max every squad. So Everything I don't runs have max enough squads. to do it. 
That's why. I, I don't only own. That. I only own. I know only fifteen. Oh, you, only. It, the squad is ten. That's over ten. Are you that bad know, at math? I wanted. I wanted three squads of ten. No, I'm <laughs> if Give I'm maxing, you'll get there. I know pretty much. Kill me. Uh, maybe, maybe that'll be the prediction I make for the next episode. Is how oh many more? No, these I promise, no get. more custodians. That's my prediction. <laughs> I I oh, no. disagree. I call false. Yeah, I disagree on that one. Um, <laughs> for anyone listening, one of the Ugh. episodes we want to do soon probably might be the next one. Um, if you ever listen to D Six Generation, they always did predictions, and I kind of really like that. So I want us to do some predictions and all. Um, so I was discussing with these guys how how I see it and the changes I want to make and, and all. So yeah, it, it, if you put that up as one of yours, if not, it'll be like the eleventh. Because absolutely disagree. You're buying more custodians. <laughs> absolutely no way. Um, any model can replace the um, the bolt cannon with the Adrathic Devastator for 15 points, or they can get the Corvée Lazen Pulsar for 35. So um, yeah, the, the Adrathic is the instant death gets hot. Yes. None of them are AP two, um, and then the la- the the Corvée Laz Pulsar is the three shot Laz cannon. Got it. AP three. For 35 points. And don't get me wrong. That is good, but that is very, very expensive. Yeah, it's very, it's um, always been that expensive. Okay. I mean, I, I it works out well because these guys are very, very fast. And on the charge, their weapon is going to do a, potentially a lot of damage. Depends on how you roll. Obviously, you could roll bad. But it could potentially do tons and tons of damage. But these guys are super, super expensive. Yes. Um. Actually, so I put them in my list to, to, to funny enough, tone down my list. But I agree. I've actually... But I've actually had fun with them. Um, weirdly enough, like people – so in the last edition, they were used to kind of charge and kill units, right? Very much so. And they had triple LAS cannons at the AP2. They used to be actual D3 shot LAS cannons. So people were complaining, oh my god, it's AP3, blah, blah, blah. But I actually like them in their base variant. Four shots at strength, six with shred, and move 16 is a fairly annoying unit to deal with. And it does put out DAC, like a squad of five of them, while expensive, does put out 20 shots with Shred 6 and Shred. That is That's nice. just chipped away through force of saves. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, and it, if nothing else, because we have a player who plays Sun Killers, it forces him, it, I shoot with them first, and then I shoot with my AP2 weaponry from another squad, you know? So it's a great way to kind of, and I hate to say this with custodians, but it's almost kind of like a nice sacrificial shooting unit to get a beta reaction out. Yeah, because that is what I see killing these guys is essentially even just mass fire because they are a three-up save. This is, yes. for the moment, until we get some other units, the worst save. Yes, You kill a three-up save by making them take saves. And they're only three wounds each. That's nine wounds at 265 points. That is doable. Um, I can see Volkite being a big problem for these guys. Yes. You know, because the extra toughness isn't going to help you quite as much there. So just realize you're taking them not because they're good per se, but because you're kind of like what I said, I'm kind of powering down my army. Yeah. So I should be also to a point you take because if you like it, like. Well, also, so side note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, mm-hmm. and this is the only unit I'm going to kind of say this with. I, you can, if you ask your local group, use the 40K models. And I actually recommend to use the 40K models, which are the Virtus Prayers. Now, they are about, I think, 0.75 inches shorter than the Virtus, than the Agamatis, right? They okay. are technically shorter. So technically, you can hide them better. Not really because the spears go everywhere, by the way, but that just kind of telling yeah. you what people might say. But two very big things why. One, the bikes come in the starter set for custodies, the Christmas box, I should say. So mm. you're going to get bikes anyway, and their bolter looks like the last from Storm Bolter anyway, right? Two, the bikes are exceptionally cost prohibitive. I actually think yeah, it are. is the highest, because it used to be you can get them in a squad of three. Now, if I'm not mistaken, unless Forge World changed, I mean, I'm not looking singles. at Forge World now. They're singles for what, 60 pounds? Uh, ridiculous? Not, I'm not even pounds, $67. Yeah, for, for one? Yes. No, no. No, 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 no. Not a chance. Not a chance in hell. Um, so, again, if you're getting the Christmas box, you're going to get Virtus Praetors in the box, which are the 40K equivalent. In my opinion, they look better. And Dave can disagree with me on this one, but in my opinion, they 1,000% look better than, than, and I curse incoming, than the dick bikes from Forge World. Because they're not even ribbed for their pleasure. You know, at least the Space Marine ones are ribbed. These are just smooth. 
Um, sorry, bad joke. Um, but that being said, like they're cost prohibitive and they just don't, in my opinion, again, you guys can disagree with me here. They just don't look good. Right. Am I they, crazy? They, the, overall, I would say it looks fine, but when you put that price together, it's, it's a very flat sort of model. It's very, um, it, it, we saw the same thing when I was looking at some of the models for cyberpunk that like, Hey, some of the things are cool, but when you look at it, the model's kind of flat. It's, it's, it's very one dimensional. When I look at this guy, if you have him straight on, everything is straight on. What I like about the, uh, about the Virtus Praetors is th- their weapons are kind of up or over. Yeah. The spears bit. are literally modeled. Yeah. yeah. yeah th- th- there's a little bit of more dynamic to it where that other model kind of, it, it looks like the old style you used to have to do for molding purposes that everything's kind of compact. Yep. You know? Also fun fact, old style. Are you ready for this nonsense? Okay. If you're speaking about old style, Weirdly enough, in original 40k, right when jet bikes were first introduced, mm-hmm. the the original like so this is like back in second edition. God, John can correct me on this one, but like in second edition when custodians were introduced and stuff, the original custodian jet bike actually looked like the 40k one, not the 30k one. That doesn't surprise me. So it's very weird that the 40k version of it is more original. Than the 30k one. I'll tell you why. Because when you take a look at it, I feel it's somewhat obvious. When you look at the jet bike and compare it to the vehicles, it essentially looks like one part of the vehicle. Yes. So they try to mimic the style and exact look of those vehicles. It looks like on the vehicle, if you took it, if if you know, like a, a custodian could stand sit on each side of it and it could pop <laughs> yeah. off like the Batmobile or something like that. <laughs> That's actually funny. I like that. So that, that that's what I kind of see it as. And but how I again, to, to our listeners, if you're thinking of starting custodies and you got the Christmas box or even the starter box, I think has it. The battle box. Yes, it does. Called. It has uh, like yes. two of them in it or something. Or it's, no, yes. it might have a squad. Three, three. It's three, three. Um, yeah, just just, yes, just yes. run the forty k bike. I, so far, I'll, again, this is <laughs> depends per region. So far in my region, which is the Northeast, and I've traveled as far as Massachusetts to play thirty k. No one has given a shit. No one's going to care enough for those prices because the other option is no one will ever use them. It's just too much. It's ridiculous. All right, Steve, tell us about these guys that you so wanted to talk about. The Palace. <laughs> yes, the Palace Attack Speeder Squadron. For 60 right, points, is... 60 points, only 60 points, you can get a vehicle. <laughs> oh, it's still a the vehicle. The best vehicle. Yeah, the it's best vehicle. vehicle. That's actually surprising because... The Space Marine land speeders all became cavalry. Ooh, okay. So we are move 16, ballistic skill 5, armor 11, 11, 10, 3 hull points. You get one palace attack speeder armed with a centerline mounted, twin linked Arachnus Blaze cannon, and a flare shield. So you get bonus protection against uh, front arc attacks, uh, minus 1 strength to attacks normally, minus 2 if it's a blast weapon. It is a fast skimmer vehicle. It is Legio Custodes. It can deep strike. It can outflank, and it's it's loyalist. Um, get up to two additional speeders for sixty points apiece. So it's perfectly linear scaling. And any model may replace the twin linked Arachnus Blaze Cannon for a twin linked Adrathic Devastator for twenty points per model. Meh. Yeah, I would I would never do that. Keep these yep. guys cheap. Yep. yep. And my um, guys... favorite thing about these guys is the first time I ever, no, sorry, the stupid big game Dan and I played where he put, how many points was it, Dan? Like 7,000 points? I don't, Jesus Christ. You're we making played, me go back. And, we played and a silly big game where the majority, not all, but the majority of Dan's custodies took to the field. And turn one, Dan's attack speeder, He's like, I'm going to sit in the woods, <laughs> you know, get this. that cover oh, sleeve, you know. Um, he's like, all right, I, I stole the, he's like, all right, coming out of those, I'm going to get you. Rolls a one and immobilizes himself. Yeah. Very first move of the game. And they just sit ah. there. And they were freshly painted. No too. They targets. Were the, they yep. was the first time using them. And I just sat there like, like the most defeated person. It was so sad. It was so yeah. bad. 
deployment was like a like a spear tip sort of the point but coming off of the yeah. short table which was like a long table setup he was all the way in the back corner didn't have the shot lined up and i had a tactical squad no joke walk from one side of the table to the other and just slap some crack grenades yeah, on it charged it and killed it yep oh god i fucking forgot about that god damn it yeah i love this model only because it, of that it was, it was, to be it fair, was though, awesome. 60 points. So I use this model. I usually take one, if not three. Um, this model is for 60 points. You get a twin linked two shot strength eight AP one lance. Uh, yes. At move 16. Because yeah. remember, you can move 16 and still fire one right, weapon. Here's the, at, thing. Here's, the skull. here's the thing. It's more dollars than points. It is. That's, that adds the thing. It is. Oh, but it's a lot more, three. actually. It's like twice. You only need three though. You don't you don't need hell, you could one. <laughs> I use I used one for sixty points. So fun fact with custodians, you always end up with like anywhere between a hundred to like sixty points left over. It's a very weird kind of thing. And so if you have sixty points left over, just throw in a palace. What or if, what you could take two more solarite power gauntlets. Oh God, no, please. Exactly. <laughs> I have it's a stronger weapon, too. technically. Fun fact, I actually have ten solar I have a squad of ten solarites. Remember, I don't magnetize, so I, I build all the options. So okay. Dan builds all of the 10,000. Yes. Yeah, I'm actually approaching. It, in the future, you're going to have more than the Emperor himself had. I, it, I'm i actually, and this is, I don't know if this is sad or not, I'm actually approaching a, an actual shield host of 1,000. Hell yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, that's a thing. Yeah. I mean, funny. I probably have about 400 Iron Warriors at least purchased. So okay, I understand. So okay. Listen, Henry Cavalier got shit on me. Okay, that's all that matters. Ooh. Yeah, you should invite him to listen. your basement for a game. He doesn't definitely, fucking listen to this. Definitely, he's definitely gonna get let yeah, out of your house afterwards. Henry Cavalier yeah. got shit on me. I got I own more custodians than Henry Cavill. Boom. But like, <laughs> like that doesn't have to be true tomorrow if he doesn't want to. He could just be like, if, if all of a sudden I get like a tweet where he talks shit and he's like, this dude. I'm gonna just die. I'll, I'll dig a hole. I'll dig a grave my damn self. Can you imagine? I mean, theoretically, when it comes to the the Games Workshop world, you should be like his favorite person because you have more. Oh no, he is. Than yeah, he's really cool. No, no, well, I mean you. You should be his favorite person oh. because you have more than <laughs> anyone else. I actually think, and I've always wanted to try this, like poll it. I think yeah. I have the most custodians in the Eastern Coast. Of the people alone, who would respond dude, to the poll, yes. The is there some the guy? States? Yeah, is so, is there some guy who probably has more, but also like won't go on the internet? So for those who don't, yeah, for crazy. those who don't go on the internet and brag, see, hey, maybe you know we have listeners in what Switzerland or Netherlands. Listen, it as of last. Hey, count, we rank really I well have, in Malaysia. Let me tell you Malaysia. that right now. So as of last count, I have six hundred and forty-seven infantry models of custodies, one hundred and three sisters of silence, also and named twelve tanks ish. Like a, a are, are the tanks palace. named? No, 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 no. They're not named. That's the only. Oh, 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 I forgot. And I also have uh, three Telemons, twelve Contemptors, all named. Why is it you don't name the tanks? Uh, that to because, me almost sounds no, no. like the weirdest so, thing now. So because they weren't based, I did not know how to base the tanks. They're on the weird night base, right? Because they're floating right. tanks. I finally figured out a magnet size that works. So finally, after what four years of having them or three years of having them, I finally base them magnetize and everything so i'm very tempted to actually name the tanks because my vehicles are named the knights are actually named so it'll be a very real possibility that in the near future the tanks actually it's not a possibility names. you're absolutely going to do that then okay listen but like i'd like to keep it up to like you know chance ish shut up <laughs> if, if that lets you sleep at <laughs> that's night. another prediction for me <laughs> know, right? oh god I disagree with that one <laughs> how do i make you lose <laughs> i'm just not gonna bike a story <laughs> No, no, you, you will. Oh my god, I will. That's the, that's the problem. Because either one, you're going to want it, or two, in three months, you're going to forget that was said. And you're just going to buy them anyway. Yep, that's my plan. All right. Um, Dan wanted to talk about the Venatari. Oh uh, yes, because they just got buffed. The yeah, FAQ actually did buff. Them. Did you walk away? What are you doing? No one. Hello. Now you're back. Hi. Welcome back. Oh, that was weird. No, I was actually talking to my. I guess because I, I leaned back as I was talking. That'll do um, it. You know, I was just like leaning. I was stretching. Consistency so, is key. Stay the same distance oh, at all God. times. But it's the city. All right. So Venatari actually recently got buffed. Get a more comfortable chair or better setup. 
Yeah, true. So um, they got buffed, and what I'll do is I'll include that buff when I talk about the actual unit, because yeah, it's an actual war gear change. It's a legit war gear change. So the Venatari are t- three, 230 points, which is, you'll see it's, it is expensive. They need to go down, but whatever. Movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness 5, 2 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 9, 3-up save. And that 3-up save will give you an idea that they're actually a 3-up 6-up. That'll automatically help you right there. They are armed with probably the coolest goddamn gun in all of 30k, the Kinetic Destroyer. They're armed with a buckler, a little tiny shield, a misericord, a Venatari jump harness, which is essentially a jump pack. For those who don't know, it's, it's I think, a 14-inch move. I'll look it up in the rules in a second, but it's essentially a jump pack that gives it a certain move. Uh, they have the Org Demi Plate, so again, a 3-up, 6-up. Melta Bombs, Frag Grenades. They have Deep Strike, Stubborn, Relentless, Loyalist. Uh, at 70 points each, you can take an additional one. And at, for the Venatari Lance, you can take an additional 10 points. So first, let's talk about the Venatari Lance and and the Kinetic Destroyer because, ironically, they're the same gun with the difference being that one is a spear. So the gun is... So first of all, it's a pistol. So you have to imagine a very small revolver pistol, right? And then the Lance is a spear. They both shoot at 12 inches. Strength 7, AP 4, Assault 3, Ren 6. Now, if you're thinking, that sounds a lot like an autocannon, you're right. Their revolvers are literally autocannons, which is probably the coolest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. (laughs) Um, Now, the difference here is that if you take the lance, you now have a spear. So it's Strength uh, 6, AP 2, two-handed melee, but no reaping blow. Now, the If you don't take the spear and you take the pistol and buckler, this is what changed. The buckler used to be, doesn't matter, who cares? (laughs) Now, the Tarsus buckler is reduced to strength characteristics of all shooting attacks made against a unit in which the majority of models have a Tarsus buckler by minus two to a minimum of one. Meaning, if you have a majority of people in the unit with buckler and pistol, any shots coming in, no matter what, are at minus two strength. Ugh. <laughs> that means uh, that heavy bolters are wounding you on sixes. Gross. Gross. Yes. Yeah, that's actually really, really rough. That means that a regular bolter goes to strength two. Yep. But remember that the, the way the chart goes, it's five, six, six, and then nothing. No, no, you still wound on uh it's it's not double plus one. The chart is um it's five, six, it's six, shift. nothing. That's the chart. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You're oh yeah. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, once you're These, off by so, four, you can't wound anymore. Off by four, that's what it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so they can just barely do it yes. on your standard weapon. Yep. Now, mind you, the reason this changes because the buckler was reduce all plasma and melta by minus two. Which was for other legions points, have rules used. like that. It's fine. There's yeah, exactly. But it was 230 points and a three up save. So it was like, why take them? This at least take makes them now. You take like you know what I'm saying. Like before, yeah. you there were 230 points, 70 points pop. You don't take them for auto cannons. Eh, who gives a shit? Now I could see them, and it's really cool because you actually balance it. The shield is not. It used to be a melee weapon. They actually got rid of that. It used to be a strength six AP three weapon. They, they, that's no longer the case but you have some spears in there you have a majority of shields so it's like one spear for every two shield right the spears attack an initiative 5 ap2 clear out some of the chaff and then your venatari attack with their misericordias which are strength 4 ap nothing but it's still instant death so it's still kind of nice right you don't get an apothecary save if it goes through the armor so i these guys now i actually take them um they're still expensive Yes, but I absolutely take them because they're great for like deep striking in. Um, they'll get shot on the way in, but are you going to shoot them or are you going to shoot the Heteron or Aqualon that also deep struck in? You know what I mean? It's a, And then now they have 12 inch range guns. Sure, but they're strength seven, three shots with rending six up. Five of them are going to put out 15 strength seven shots. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's a nice unit. I do like them a lot and they look awesome. These guys, for those who, I think it was the 80s. Someone's going to probably yell at me, but I think it was the 80s. This is the Hawkmen. These are literally the Hawkmen. So, yeah, they're a really cool model. 
The pistol looks really cool. Um, no, I use them now. So I take a unit of five. It's it's expensive. Don't get me wrong. It's what three seventy for five. Um, but I think for three seventy for five is not bad. No, for, it's not. I mean, because yeah. you you have to keep in mind that like okay, they're expensive for what they do, but also stat wise, their base stats are better than the average across the board. Yes. A lot of stuff, if you're they're not dedicated to be fighting this, a lot of stuff is like hitting them on fives, wounding them maybe on fives. Like you, you're going to take less damage in general just because you're kind of bumped up in most ways. And now, you're I will going say, first in a lot of combat. Try to avoid missile launchers with an undying passion with this unit. <laughs> if you if there's a ten man unit of missile launchers and or iron warrior, um, what are they siege iron breakers? Havocs. Iron yeah. no 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 siege breakers. Avoid iron. them like the actual plague. Uh, because your three up, six up is not going to survive. Now they wound you on threes, which is super hilarious, mm. but it will cut through you. So don't, don't go near them. Um, but otherwise I like this unit. It's a really cool unit. And I think they needed that buff. I think literally, I know people are complaining that they're still too expensive. Honestly, keep them like that. They're fine now. Yeah. I, they're absolutely fine. I like them at the points. Um, yeah, no, they're good. I like them a lot. All right. That moves so the next big the next set of three gets us into heavy support. They do have an extra one after that, but the next uh, set of threes gets us into heavy support. Um, does anyone have a favorite? I'll take the Gladys, my favorite unit probably of all time. The most okay. useless and well, now he's actually useful, but I love him. I'll take right. him hundred percent. Uh, uh huh. go ahead. Sagittar- do you have a I'll do you have Sagittar- a preference, Steve? I'll take Sagittarum. All right. Oh, so go for it. Question for Dan. Yes. Weren't these guys troops last edition? No, no, no. That's 40k. Oh, okay. And uh, as a spoiler, they were useless then, and they're so useless now. It's, I'm so sad at this. I they're appreciate so cool. that, a custodian. No, right, they're, they're so, so for, cool. <laughs> for 175 points, you get the custodian stat line. You get three guys with a Drassus Bolt Calibers, a Misericord, or a Quar Plate, Frag grenades, melted bombs, skirmish infantry, bulky three, chosen warriors, not the stuff. They're they're custodians. Who with a big gun? Um, they can take a Cronus with six or less guys. It could go up to ten man squads at fifty points per model. Um, and one guy can swap out his gun for a Vexilla and a Drathic Destructor. So what does the bolt caliber do, Dan? Besides okay. being a very big Bolt gun. Yeah, it's not great, guys. Um, don't get too excited. You, you could hear from my voice, sadly, that this is not going to be. <sighs> so it can't all be exciting. No, this is bad. Like, so little sign. You take these guys to actively play down, like all right. actively harm. So the bolt caliber is a heavy bolter, right? Strength five, AP four, salt four. All right. Oh, that's cool. That that's it. Uh, it also does have an underslung gun. One shot. 24 inches, strength 5 AP 2, uh, instant death gets hot, one shot. So once per game, you can shoot the other version. Yep. And th- that's it. I, I, okay, we can say that's it. But also, when you still have an instant death weapon on you. Yes. But you know, one and you miss a cord, only... like it's still not. No, no, I'm talking about the miss cord in close combat. Oh, they still oh, have an instant oh. death weapon. Yeah, but okay, so here's the problem with them. They're two wounds, mm-hmm. 175 points, right? They have a one-shot weapon, which is super cool. They do have the Misericordia as well, but they're just armed with heavy bolters. They're 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 175 point There's three man heavy, heavy bolter squad. Heavy the heavy other sad part heavy. was back in the last edition, how they fixed them right was that they allowed them to take Solarite power fists for 20 points a pop, right? So that way, if you do get to close combat, they're not just going to you know just die. They at least have some punch back. But at 175 points for a four-shot heavy they bolter? Have four melee attacks with an instant death causing weapon. Yeah. Five on a charge. That's 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 actually good. All right, Dan. You own a squad of these, right? I own fifteen. Okay. <laughs> bring bring them to the January event. I feel like yeah. actually isn't me surprised. So fun fact, I will. Because good. so this is the side note on I know I want I wanted to save this for the end, but I'm just gonna kind of preface this spoiler a little bit ironically, I know I talk shit about the Aqualons and like their shooting and the Sagittarium and the shooting where they shine is in Centurion events where it's mostly infantry. Well, no, that's where, where they shine is fighting Mechanicum where you find all the four of armor saves. 
Very true. Oh yeah, that that too. But I, I just take Venatari with the pistols, which are stupid that, hilarious. My Thalax are actually scared. This is yes. This the, the, the Venatari are so stupidly fun, and I can't wait to use them. Yeah, I, I think it kind of boils down to to some extent the idea of oh these guys aren't oh they're not so good. Well, that's because the other stuff might be too good. Yes, it's yeah. like okay. So honestly, and this is also this people are going to yell at me for this, but honestly, just give the bolter shred. That seems a lot, but here's where it's good. Every gun has shred for them. That's their literal joke that all of the bolt weapons are shred. So just for 175 points, give them shred. And now it's a, what a 12 shot shred strength five gun. Okay. Yeah. For 175 points, that's around the ballpark of what I'd spend for 175 points. You don't have to give them any, you don't have to be like, people are like, Oh, make the gun. Not one shot. No, 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 no. Strength five AP two instant death is very scary. Don't make it more. People are like, Oh, give them an extra wound. No people are like reduce the points. I don't fuck around with that because I don't like, again, points in me don't do well. Honestly, if you literally just add shred to the bolters, which makes sense because every bolter has it. Now you have 12 shots. That's it's, it's, it's hundred different points for shred. It, it, it makes it more like they, their job essentially. But yeah. like I said, I'm not GW's balance team. Um, I do know that that's what Panoptica did. It just gave them shred, and they're usable. 175 points for some, for some shred bolters. That I toss that in there. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's just my two cents. That's right. no, I, I think it, it's it's a it's a problem of some things are to some extent maybe exactly better than others. Than them. Exactly, but those other things might just be too good. Right? Exactly. I'm, you you wanted the grav tank or the dread? Um, I'll take the dread. You take the, okay. I like both, uh, but I want, the, I want the dread. All right, so for the Caladius then. So 225 points. It's move 16. That's a fast tank. It's uh, I, well, I mean, it's grav, so, but. A uh, skill 5, it's 13, 13, 11 for its armors, four hull points. Um, it's an anti-grav vehicle. It has a turret mounted um, Elastis accelerator cannon, which <laughs> actually did pull up. Where oh, good, good, good. There it is. The accelerator cannon. So it's a 48 inch range. It's strength at AP3, heavy 3, rending 6, brutal 2, and twin link. So that's actually a good gun. Yeah, it's a good gun. Yeah. It's a good gun. As a hull front mounted twin Lastrum bolt cannon, which is the weapon we've been talking about, and has a flare shield. So from the front, it's more of like a 14. Um, has power of the machine spirit, deep strike, outflank, and it's, of course, a loyalist. Um, you can change the. Um, to me, Elastis uh, Accelerator Cannon for an Arachnus, excuse me, Arachnus Blaze Cannon. And for um, people who, that's, a, for that's the heavy four shotgun at 24 inches, strength nine, AP1, Lance Exoshock six up. Yeah, it, it changed, to me, it changes the purpose of the tank greatly. Yeah, exactly. Depending exactly. on what you want. Actually, that's what I usually, so fun fact, that's the only model I have. I'm actually painted. So this is the only model where I actually don't have the tank, but I have the turret. So I have them modeled with the um, the Arachnus Blaze Cannon, and I have the turrets separate. So I just have mm. to paint the turrets and magnetize them. That being said, I, I like the Arachnus Blaze Cannon. It's 260 points for four shots, strength 9, AP 1, and it makes you armor 12. That I, Custodians kind of lack anti-ra- anti-tank ranged firepower. This is a great ranged anti tank firepower. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is just no it's, great. It's a good tank. I, it, it's a, it's a good price. It's a great tank. I have no problems with this. It's actually a really good gun. Yeah, I mean it, it's cheaper than some of the marine vehicles you see in that sort of range, but it also has a few less weapons. But it, it does what it wants and it has the flare shield built in, which yeah. is for most marine vehicles that's about a fifty point upgrade. So the tanks yep. essentially kind of like a free 50 points when you look at it that way but yeah no it, it's a good t- not not much to say about it. It, it overall it's a good tank and you know you you want some form of range cuz the yep. rest of your army is running up so you 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 have to be able to threaten people cuz otherwise they get to pick pick you off as they want and this is by the way why I like the bikes cuz I like to pair the bikes with like two tanks bikes come in shoots 20 20 strength 6 red shots right that's going to hurt let's say a sun killer squad a little bit cuz it's going to pick off maybe two three of them right do you want to shoot the bikes? No? Okay. There's three less of you now. Now here comes four strength nine AP one shots. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of cool because it like, you know, anyway. And, or you could pop Land Raiders around. It's just, hey, yeah, you said it. It's a, it's a cool tank. I yeah. All right. How about uh, that, Jenna, yes. as you still attempt to not 
mo- keep moving around with the. So that was me banging. I literally banged into the mic that time. So oh, okay. that was literally me. So oh, I know um, it was you the whole time. The Galactus Dreadnought. Oh, so little side story. The Galactus Dreadnought was such an awesome. It's an awesome model. I think it's probably top three favorite contemptors in all of. Uh, and this is not just because I play custodies. I think it looks great. It's a big boarding shield, a huge sword with like a flamer attached to it. Remember, these are contemptors. So they're super stupid posable. Um, and it's just, I think it's probably one of the best models GW has made. But that being said, uh, it is a contemptor at 235 points. It is movement eight, weapon skill six. Uh, it's actually fun fact, st- the same stats as the Achilles. Strength eight, toughness seven, six wounds, initiative four, attacks four, leadership 10, three up, uh, two up save, right? It's a dreadnought, same stats as an Achilles. Instead of taking a spear and a fist though, it has a twin linked Infernus incinerator. That's strength six, AP four, flamer. It's got a Galatus Warblade and a Gravis Presidium Shield. Oh, and an Adamatic Deflector. So basically, this is a very simple thing. The Adamatic Deflector is two up, five up. The Gravis Presidium Shield is a four up and vulnerable save. So this is actually a two up, four up Dreadnought, which is spicy. Ooh, you robot it a little bit there. I'll oh, put it right in the middle. Okay, it is a two up, four up Dreadnought because of the Presidium Shield, which is got very it. spicy. And then the Warblade, which is, I tried to do the math, and honestly, I'll just probably get Dave to do it later. But the Galatis, <laughs> the Galatis Warblade is essentially a Strength 8, uh, AP2, melee, instant death weapon. That's that's I mean, good. I mean, yes. well, yes and no. You know where the math is going to come in, right? When yeah, well, yep. well, yes, yeah, so, well... When you're attacking contemptors, we could discuss that. Or even if you're attacking, say, uh, a cataphracty or something like that, yeah, your shot, your attack would kill them. They kill them on the strength. But a lot of contemptors have like a brutal three. I am more likely to make one save than three saves. So I'm act- you're actually a little but bit weaker versus those sort of it, models. But you couple it with the four up and vulnerable save, not a five up. Ooh. Oh yeah, uh, there's a difference of your survivability, but I'm talking about your ability to kill. You're actually kill, less yeah, exactly. Third it's away. less killy, but I always want to balance. They're hitting on threes, to they're hitting on fives. That weapon skill makes a big difference. But what I'm saying is, like, I don't oh, yeah, know what it kills. Is six. Dre- yeah, it is six. I don't know what kill. What's better to kill a dreadnought? I don't know if it's the brutal three strength nine AP two fist, or if it's the uh, five up um, or if the five up Jesus the four up uh, invulnerable save. Wait, so, or so is, is you just throw a uh, you know three custodian guard at a dreadnought and just melt a bomb the things you no no you spear it to death so. nah 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 you spear it to death but that's where I'm, I always get because sure your strength eight so you're wounding on threes and it's instant set death so it's d three attacks but any attacks coming back at you you're a four up versus what? the Achilles hmm. that's strength nine wounded on twos but it's brutal three but any things coming back at you is a five up. So the bit, the part that's going to help you the most is the fact that you're actually a better weapon skill than a normal contemptor. So they're going to hit, you're going to hit them on threes. And as he said, they're going to hit you on fives. So I don't think you, what, you know, your concern of what's going to happen back is not as big because you're going to get mm, hurt a okay. lot less. So I'm fine with taking theoretically the five up. So that way I have a brutal weapon going in um, right, because you know, it, since it's here's the thing on you know, if you rolled well for your D3s when they fail, that's better. But if you roll average, I'd have to do the math. But if you roll average, I don't necessarily think it is. Um, and we have to say, well, what if you don't roll average? You could you could bottom out more, which therefore you you know, when it's three saves on a five, you're finally failing too. When it's one save on a five, you'll fail some of the time, but on average, it's not better in terms of damage. It can be, but it could also be worse. So, but it's late. I don't want to do that kind of math. <laughs> math right. hard. Uh, when you've done it all day. All right. That takes us to a total of three things left, assuming we want to talk about the Lord's War, which they seem short. So maybe we'll we're very, discuss yeah, them very super, short. super fast. Basically there, we might as well finish. Yes. All right. Um, does anyone have a preference of which thing? Which one's Dan's um, least favorite? I'll actually take the Ares. Someone po- take the poor Telemon. This you thought the Sagittarium were sad. Oh, oh, the Telemon. Oh, boy. Uh, 
I do you care which one you do, eight Steve? And wounds eight, and I don't feel that bad for it. I'm sorry. Dave. No, no, no. You'll see why I, I get salty about it. There is I'll, an I'll, actual reason. I don't I'll, see I'll, it at all, so. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the Orion. All right. I'll take the Telemon and let's see if I get sad about it like Dan does. I probably won't. All right. He is 365, so he, he's expensive. He's move six. He's heavy, so he's not going fast. So, so we're looking at closer Leviathan. to Leviathan yeah. type thing here. Uh, weapon skill six, so he's better than that. Weapon skill five. He has strength, toughness, and wounds of eight. So very similar. Uh, initiative four with five attacks. Two up save, two up save ten leadership. Um, his war gear, he has two Telamon Cestus with inbuilt Proteus Plasma Projectors. <laughs> Why the fuck do they have to do everything with special names? <laughs> um, gotcha. so this is okay so that yeah, is basically yeah. his massive fucking fist that's like his right. his his biggest fist now th- before you look at it before you look at it i'm gonna ask you a question it's a leviathan right it's basically a leviathan stat wise that, that's the way what is the brutal yes. so what is the brutal on a leviathan claw the well so the claw is what is that brutal two or three i take the siege drill okay but it's it's but the claw itself siege drill is not Brutal. It's not right, but it's got shred and stuff, right? You think, okay, no, he's, his hand. 12. Okay, but it's it's the claw. No, what I'm saying is the uh, cl- the uh, siege drill is shred or no? Uh, no. Oh, all right. So. I, I, give me a second. I'll I'll find it. But no, the so the Leviathan claw strength ten, AP two, melee brutal three. Oh god. The siege drill is twelve, AP two melee, but it's armor bane. That's the one. Armor bane. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ready for this? Tell him case this. Strength 10. Okay. AP 2. Sunder. Okay. That's that's it. W- 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 but when you get to strength 10, I'm not... Qu- I mean, okay, it's not quite as good as some of the other ones, but I'm not quite as concerned about that it's overall. It's the lack of brutal that salts me. It's... it's every, the, the, So, this is... I don't even care about the rules. It's the fact that the tiny, tiny contemptor puny hands, right, are brutal 3, but the Telemann Castus which is a massive fist the size of an actual space marine is sunder with no brutal. That's what salts me. It's not even the rule. It's just literally that's what gives me like like acid in my stomach. That that yeah. like look I cannot express to you how big that fist is, by the way. There's Dan. a solution, Dan. You just double up on storm cannons. No, you don't, and I'll talk about that why. So anyway, yeah, keep going. Oh, sorry, the Proteus. I apologize. Um the Proteus is actually really cool. I will point that out. The Proteus, give me a second. I don't know why am I there. We are. The Proteus. It's a flame weapon. Give me one. Sec. Actually, I think it's a plasma weapon. Funny enough. It, it, yeah, it's called Proteus Plasma Projector. Yes, yeah, it is a template weapon. Strength seven, AP four, assault one, breaching four up. Gets hot. So it's a, it's a flamer template. It's a flamer template yeah. with a breaching four up. All right. Uh, how about the the what? The Spiculus bolt, bolt, la- bolt Launcher? Yes, Spiculous that is a missile launcher. weapon. That's pretty cool. Okay. So the Spiculus okay, Bolt Launcher is a... Give me a second. Oh, it's not a missile weapon? Hello? Huh? Apologies. I thought it was a missile weapon. Where yeah, the hell is... Bolt, oh, is it a bolt right weapon? Oh, my bolt God. Launcher. Don't tell me it's a... It's, called, it's called a bolt launcher. It's also not in bolt weapons. Oh, it's a bolt launcher. Oh, fuck's sake, GW. It's a bolt launcher weapon. All right, so the Spiculus bolt launcher is strength, is range 36, strength 6, AP 4, heavy 8, pinning. Okay. So, nice, yeah. Uh, oh, and there's the Irish Shrike, of course. He's Hammer F3, very similar to Leviathan, moves through cover like them, and Loyalist. Um, he can exchange either or both of his, essentially, his, his fists for... Um, Arachnus bolt cannons for 35 points or the ele- um, was it? Elastis uh, uh, Accelerator Culverin for 25. Yes. Um, so normal Leviathan's 270 start. This guy's 365. He is better overall in certain ways because of, you know, he's got the extra the extra wound. Um, he's got the extra weapon skill, so he does a good job. It is a little odd that he didn't have Brutal in any way. Yep. Um, I do find a lot, but I don't think he's bad. Also, here's have, where it gets funny. Them, so, but. wait, hold on, but it gets yeah. better. So, the accelerator okay. cannon, or is it the culverin? Yeah. No, no, it's the cannon, Culverin. Right? It's culverin. culverin. So, it's it's strength 8, AP 3, heavy 4, rending 6, up brutal 2. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's um, good. 24 inch, right? That's pretty cool. <laughs> the arachnid storm cannon. 
Strength 8, AP 1, Heavy 3, Lance Exoshock. Wow, really cool, right? 12 inch uh, range. It's a close. Yeah, you get you get close. <laughs> How? He moves six. <laughs> my my Leviathan has charged mo- usually every game charges people. Because yeah. remember, your opponent's gonna move forward as well. Usually they need to get to a spot or you're moving forward. Yeah, it might only move in six inches, but I'll get there. Or I'll get close enough. Or maybe you'll move, get within 12, and I'll reaction my way up or something. Um, honestly, what kills me, honestly, is the lack of brutal. Either, listen, listen. Either they don't kill, give him brutal, fine. Who cares? But a 12-inch gun, c- come on. C- look at the size of that gun. Look at the size of that gun. You're telling me that thing? The barrel is goddamn 12 inches, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think he's fine. I don't what know is the gunpowder they're using? <laughs> right. Let's go to the Orion because yes. the, we'll get through the last. So these are both Lords of War. Yes. Should be somewhat fast because it's essentially just some weapons. Yes. All right, Steve, take the Orion. All right, the Orion, the Orion assault dropship. We're now the Lords of War. It's 600 points. So you have to play at least a 2,400 point game to field this thing. For this, you get a move 19, which is such a specific number. I hate it. Yeah, it's it. weird. It's prime. <laughs> it's 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 wise. <laughs> it's wise what Are it flyers is. Flyers 20 normally? Is that what it is? Are Flyers 20? I just put the book down. I don't know. Why are you asking this? I don't care. Yeah. I just hate it. I hate it so much. I'm going to check for <laughs> about my Zyphon since now I have one. All right. Move How fast that is. 19. Ballistic skill 5. Wait, so do you round up? You do round up. Ugh, yeah, it's a round-up system. Whatever. So you move 10 and still shoot everything. Or 19 and whatever. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to focus on it. I'm not going to focus on it. I'm going <laughs> to let it go. It's armor 13, 12, 11. Seven hull points, which is a very, very nice chunk. And it's got a transport capacity of 24. Or in custodian's terms, it could carry eight guardians. Yep. Or six uh, turbies? Uh, yes. Or yeah. six um, Constantine Valdors. Get, the, <laughs> get out of here. With um, so, yeah, you get one dropship. It gives you two center line mounted Arachnus heavy blaze cannons. Yeah, this is a Two ship, hull like. front mounted twin Lastrum bolt cannons. Two hull front mounted spickless heavy bolt launchers, same as the um, the Telamon had, right? No, no it's, it's the heavy, heavy version. Yeah, I'll tell you, this thing shoots. And then like... it's got an eclipse shield. It's a flyer. It has hover, so you don't have a minimum movement like others do. It's lumbering, which means it can't jink if I remember correctly. And it's a transport. It has power of the machine spirit, so all its weapons independently target, which makes no sense because, oh, it's not super heavy. It's just a Lord of War. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense now. It's an assault vehicle, so you could fly, disembark, charge. It has mm-hmm. deep strike, which I thought would be built into flyer, but maybe not. It's got a transport bay, which means it could carry dreadnoughts in it. Um, they would count as 10 models 10. each. Yep. Yeah, 10 models 10. each. Um, and it's loyalist, no duh. And has one access point at the rear of the vehicle. So, slight note on the weapons. This thing is actually scary amounts of firepower. So just mm-hmm. give you an idea of how much... Steve, do me a favor. Read me the first weapon. The centerline mounted Arachnus Heavy Blaze Cannon. Heavy Blaze Cannon. So, and that's two of them, right? Yeah, it's two of them. Yes, that's, sir. In total, two and two shots at Strength 9 AP1, Exoshock 6 up Lance. All right? So that's already got four shots of that. Then, what's the other weapon? Twin Lastrum Bolt Cannon. So yeah, two, twin, of those. two of those. So that's an, a further uh, 16 shots because that's eight and eight at strength six AP four with shred. And then I believe this two speakless heavy bolt launchers. Yeah. You ready for this one? Strength six AP four heavy 12 pinning each one. I mean, he's going to earn you 600 points. Yeah. he's gonna, yeah. <laughs> This thing actually, when it needs to clear a drop site, it fucking will clear a drop site really, really well. <laughs> like, it's it's really cool. It actually clears it clears the area what you need to do, which I think is pretty damn cool. It's also pretty ugly, but that's a different side. That's a different. I will eventually get it, but I hate the booty of it. I hate the back of it so much. Well, that's the transport part. 
Yeah, it's just so it's so like so you have the whole sleekness of the custodies, and there's just like a big box in the back. I'm like, God damn it! Because you got to put the custodies somewhere. <laughs> I know it's just it's so them? dumb. It's so dumb. All right, Steve. So, so here's some other stuff for you to hate. The um, Storm Eagles on Thunderhawk, all those are move 18. The Xiphon is 20. So this one sits right between them. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Oh, don't worry. The Ares does the same thing. I should also point out what the hell an Eclipse Shield is, by the way. Oh, and yes. I just realized, yes yeah, I just realized it has an Eclipse Shield. I'm like, oh, people probably don't even know what that is. All right, give me a second. I got to find where in the world an Eclipse. I know it's under probably the special war gear. That's a flare shield. Eclipse shield. All right, so here we go. Oh, yeah, this is stupid. All right, so the vehicle with the Eclipse shield reduces the strength of shooting attacks made from the front armor by negative one or negative two. It has blast. Okay. It's uh, just it a player. No, or uses a template. No, no, it's a little different. Um, an Eclipse shield has no effect against destroyer type weapons. But if, a, this is, but if a shooting attack targeting the front of the model with the vehicle type of the Eclipse Shield inflicts a glancing or penetrating hit, then the model with the vehicle type immediately gains shrouded 5 plus special rule against all subsequ- subsequent shooting attacks targeting it in the front armor. Subsequent. Um, tar- targeting it uh, in the same phase. So once you get glanced or penetrated once, you now have a 5 up shrouded save. For the phase. For the phase, For the phase. Yeah. And assuming it doesn't kill you because this... They still could kill you. Yes, true. But it's still nice. Yeah, it, it, it gives you a like get super heavy protections. So no, it does not. One no, it does not. One penetrating hit with an AP yes. of two, like say a LAS cannon. Okay, yep. this yeah. is interesting. It's an interesting thing. It's it's risky, but it's an assault vehicle too. So it, it's kind of cool. I like it. I like the other one more though because it looks better right. too, in my opinion. Why don't, you, why don't so, you talk about the Aries then? Aries, move 19. I wish it was move 20, just as Steve flip a, a damn table. No, no, if it was 20 move 20 is fine. 20 is a normal. No, no but like, so 19, one is 19, there's one is nothing. 20. But, but it's natural. the same vehicle. Okay, that's fine. I know, but could you imagine one, it was like 20? Or like it was 20 21. Just to make Steve 21. Just to make the, <laughs> at least 21 is multiple of seven and three, exactly. which makes it the, reasonable. The, the giant transport is box is slowing them down. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's move 19, ballistic skill 5, strength, uh, 13, 12, 10, 7. It's the same exact as in, uh, as in Orion. More expensive, though. You'll see why in a second. It's flying, hover, lumbering, deep strike, power of the machine, spirit. It's weapons. So it has an eclipse skill. It has an airy strike built in. So again, if you're someone's deep striking on the battlefield, one or two are distorted. So uh, re- do me a favor. Read me the weapons as I um, go to the weapon section. So what is the first weapon it's got? It's the, the same one, the Arachnus Heavy Blade. Oh, cannon. okay. So yeah, it's got two part. of those. Now it does yeah. have the Magna, though. That is yeah, it has the one, one Magna. I, as a just a repl- just a kind it's of a destroyer one, right? It's Destroyer Two. Yeah, Destroyer. Strength two. Ten, AP One, Exoshock Four Up, for when you really need to just kill something. Because I believe Destroyer, Steve, can correct me. Destroyer is just D six damage, isn't it? Um, uh, uh, I, I want to say it's D six damage on a whole points, or it's two D and it's two D six on a knight. I played so many small Little. games lately. I don't remember the big. Guns. Well, for now, I'm going to say that's what it is because that's where my brain is going. It's I think it's D6 on a tank, two D6 on anything bigger than a tank, like a super heavy, and it's two of those shots at exo shot. So, <laughs> two shots hitting on twos. It's lance and it's strength ten. So you're glancing on twos, penetrating on threes. Any penetrates that you do and you don't kill it will do a further penetrating hit on a four up. And because it's AP one on a five or six, you're also exploding the vehicle. I mean, it's expensive, yeah. but it's good. Yeah, but it's, it's, for six fifty, you want it to be able to do something. That's exactly. This is this is this is literally an anti tank. This is the anti tank. Period. Which, but in a, which it, in a perfect world, what is it? It'd mm. be it'll. Let's say you shoot a tank. It'll be two d six damage. Let's say um, you penetrated four times because of the exoshock and. It, it, yeah, it's just nuts. Well, the um, big thing is it somewhat needs to be because it doesn't have super heavy protection. Exactly. It's one shot this thing. Now, it does have firebombs, which I actually yes. have to look up because I don't think I've ever – I know like two people own this, and I don't think I've ever used the actual firebombs. I'm trying to find it. I have no idea where it is. Okay, so Hold was on. your destroyer question from earlier? I'll answer yeah, that. Yeah, so question. what is the damage? While I look for firebombs. If it inflicts a glancing or penetrating hit, it does D3 hull points of damage instead of one. Oh, it's it glancing. A wound, it's D3 wounds. Oh, so it's glancing, not even penetrating. So it's D3 of whatever it does. Oh, okay, so D3 damage. 
It's AP one, so you might be able to explode it. And on a four up, you just do an automatic other penetrating hit that you roll on again. Right. So for bad. for those fire bombs, they're strength six, AP four, heavy one. They're massive blast seven inches, and they ignore cover. What's bomb range? I don't get that one. So when uh, you bomb, bomb, you fly mm-hmm. over something and you drop bombs on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then you okay. scatter. D6 yeah, inches. essentially, it's path. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Actually, that's not bad. It work as you logically think they would work, which is not normal for Games Workshop. I know. It's a seven-inch blast. You can cover a whole lot of that. Ignores cover. That's kind of cool. I like that. AP4. Yeah, that's nice. It's a cool guy. It's, 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 and I think it looks cooler than the Orion. Mostly because the butt piece is off and it has this big generator in the back to power its stupidly powerful um, front nose gun, essentially. Yeah. Hey, Dan, can I annoy you? What happened? In the picture of the, you know, like the artwork on that page. Yeah. You could see the mounting point for no. the, uh, for the flyer. Oh, page. you can. <laughs> it's right there. It's even fun edge fact. highlighted. It's even yeah. edge highlighted. So, so fun it's, fact, never use that now. mounting point ever. It's never canon. use that mounting point. It's, it'll snap right off your face. <laughs> this will not, la- oh, those are the fire bombs. I actually never noticed those are the fire bombs. Oh, those are neat. Okay. Under the wings, like those little missiles. Okay. Yeah. That's a cool, that's something I'll pick up. A hundred percent. That's something I'll pick up. Aha! Orion, there it is. Dan's custodians of twenty twenty three. No, no, no yeah. wait, no, no, wait. Hold on, I lied. I'm not. Damn it! Watch <laughs> <laughs> well, it, Dan. If you, if, you buy it, if you buy it right so, now, fun fact: you're safe Steve, from next year. Yeah. It's a prediction. Steve, yeah, I was gonna say, Steve. If you didn't know this, by the way, I was actually looking to buy one at PAX because they had one last year, and they mm-hmm. actually looked at me and said some guy bought, came in and bought both of them. And I was like, that just, oh. that just means you got to get there earlier next year. Pretty much. That's all it means. And I was like, oh, oh. All right. Why don't why don't we do some closing thoughts so we can we can be done with this this marathon here? Um, I think Dan will go last because he'll yes. have the most thoughts, and our thoughts will in no way be able to to reach that level. Steve, what do you think? If you like having only three stat lines to worry about. But a lot of different <laughs> weird, ne- lots of weird weapon names that no one would be able to follow. This is the faction for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually funny. I like that. Um, um, no, I mean they—they're not as abusive as they were when they first released in the previous edition. They're also still really good. Um, at least the core like troops units are, which is really good if you like working with plastic because that's what's really good. Um, you know, I know you could do a massive all plastic army if you really wanted to, because a lot of Dan's army is plastic. Um, it's it's not Space Marines; it's Space Marines plus one, pretty much across the board. If Terminator mm. lists were not elite enough for you, Custodes. Yeah, um, I'm gonna, I'm going to echo a lot of those same sort of thoughts. The these guys, it, it, it's it's hard to make a very good judgment at this moment. Um, one, I mean, I've seen them in action, so I know they're very strong. And, you know, Dan mentioned, oh, you know, you can play these sort of things to downplay. But you're kind of downplaying what Custodes do or where they're at, which I think is still exceptionally high and exceptionally good. And I think a lot of it even just comes from that base stat line. Being that one better in in the stats that matter, your strength, your toughness, um, you, you know, your of usually maybe sometimes a little bit better in the wounds or your initiative. If I can do what I do a little bit faster than other people or can tank the shots a little bit more, that makes the big difference. Yes, you're going to have less models, but when your models have such higher quality, you don't need as many to get there. If, if I have a single guy who gets in, you still might have a bad day depending on what I hit. Um, if you're looking for something, like I said, in a lot of plastic, this gives you good options. You have you you could do this out of 40k style army. If you're a 40k player and you wanted to go into heresy, here's a great option. Play your 40k stuff. Get in there, see what you think, and then think about getting some of the special units. What I will say, I'm curious what will happen. You know, at this point, GW is putting out a decent amount of stuff in plastic for the Marine Legions. And I think next year we're going to see a tons of it come out plastic. I don't know if or when we're going to see the options that are missing here, the special options that are essential in the Forge world, if you're going to see those. So, you know, if you want to get some of the more special units, you still might kind of not necessarily have some of those options, but you you have a good base. And I think you're going to have a very strong army. 
um, you know, make sure your opponent knows the things you do because you do things that are so different and with such different names and such different pieces that it could potentially be a very negative play. Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead, Dan. What do you think? No. um, So again, I've played Custodians since they came out in seventh edition. For those who don't Mm -hmm. know, that's the talent that I love Custodians. Um, They they were everything because for those who don't know me, and I know Dave knows where I'm going with this. I like to play elite armies. I played Deathwing. Then I sold that. I played uh, Grey Knights, specifically Drago Wing. Then I sold that. Then I played Knights and I sold that. So I always liked small model. And Custodians kind of scratched that itch. It was infantry, but elite and awesome, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I think I played Custodians a little bit more than most other people and obsessed over them, I can make some kind of snap judgments on them, especially in Horus Heresy. I think that the troops are a little too powerful. Um, and they that is a negative play right there. And it sucks both ways. They're too powerful in the fact that if I just take 10 dudes with spears, there's you can shoot them all you want. But that is a 20 wound unit with a two up, six up, that if they touch you, even if two dudes touch you, it's going to wipe a squad of infantry. Um, and it's cheap. And that shouldn't be the case with a troop unit. Because it's like, okay, I want to take a tear on with Meridian Blades. They're awesome. They're great, right? They do it murder strike four up. But for 10 Heteron, I could take 20 Custodian Guard. That may not do murder strike, but they put out the same amount of attacks, actually more because they have reaping blow, right? Um, that I mean, like it's just, it, to me, it's like it's a it's not a feels good. But I wanted to start with the negative for a good reason, by the way, because there's a reason mm-hmm. why. But that also means that it forces you to play options to play down, which is a weird way to say that, right? Again, it's like oh, I don't want to load up on elites because that's playing up. You, in here, you want to load up on elites to play down, right? I, for example, would take about five troops, or sorry, five troops, uh, five man squads, one five man squad of troops per 500 points. So at around 3,000 points, you do one around, what is that, 20 models? Did I do that right? No, 30 models, right? No, it'd be, five, it'd be, five, five, it'd be 30 because you're, you're taking your 30. full set of six yeah. at that point. Yeah, full set of six, but only take five because that way it gives you objectives and you could play now with other points. You could take Aqualons, you could take a Terra, you could take the Achilles. Um, ignore the Sagittarium. I still think they're awful. Um, and the cool thing is a lot of it is plastic. With the exception of... Actually, fun fact, the Contemptor is technically plastic because you could buy a plastic Contemptor and give it two fists. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, technically, most of your stuff is plastic. Now, I should point out also that the Legacies did not come out for Custodes yet, if ever. I know Solar Auxilla did come out. But Custodes may also be getting a, a, a Legacies document that adds Land Raiders. And in my dream, hopefully Alaris and Virtus Praetors. But like I said, you can play an entirely plastic army just off the base set of custodians, um, which cost, which reduces the cost by an immense amount. Um, and they are a fun army to play. Uh, yes, they dominate close combat, as they should. Um, but it's kind of cool to have like weapons that do weird things. Like I love taking the lance weapons. Because I don't even think, the, do Space Marines even have lance weapons? Um, yes, they, but it's the weird stuff. I'm trying to remember what it was. But that's what I say. Like it, it, you have some re- acts, some really cool, weird weapons. They look amazing. I don't know if Dave was is Dave is going to add on the YouTube video like some of the pictures of the units we talked about. But I haven't like, decided. Um, it's a really busy week, so it depends on how no, fast we yeah. get this out. No, no, the exactly. The I want to get it out, the less pictures, the no, no, but I was saying. So I mean, <laughs> listen, if you're listening, you could also browse as we talk, but. It's like the filigree between the filigree. It's it's ostentatious without being ostentatious, if that makes any sense. Like Emperor's Children is nuts. These are still nuts, but in a way that's more like regal and refined. Um, and again, just rules wise, they play pretty cool. You know, you're close combat. You're a monster. You can have some really funny shots with like pistols that shoot auto cannon rounds, essentially, which is stupid fun to think about. There's Magnum armed with an auto cannon round. Um, it's just they're a really cool army. They're really fun and they're great as an ally too. I don't think we even mentioned this. They're great as an ally. You know, if you're missing, let's say you're playing loyalist iron warriors, just to piss off Steve. You're playing. <laughs> you're playing Oh man, he didn't say anything. Did I, Steve? You there? It's, yeah, it's oh. there's nothing wrong with the loyalist iron oh, okay. warrior. Just so the existence lo- of imperial fist is a problem. 
Oh, yeah, exactly. So you're playing Lord of the Star Wars. That's mostly geared towards shooting, you know, last cannons. Take a custodian detachment. There's your close combat, you know, beat stick. Um, you know, it's, it's just really cool. They, they they add a lot, and they also play alone very well. And I will agree with Steve. They're nowhere near the power of their first release. They're horizontally powerful compared to their second release in first edition. With some minor differences. They're about just as powerful. But yeah, I think they're a neat army, obviously, because I own them, right? But no, they, they mm. are a neat army. And they're actually, again, they're very fun to play and they're very cheap to get into. You don't even need to buy the Christmas box. The Christmas box is what, like 300 bucks? 200 mm, actually? They're 210. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, all of them are 210. Okay, I lied. Pick up a Christmas box. <laughs> wait, <laughs> holy shit. Wait, are you serious? They're 210? Uh, yes, good luck all the finding a Christmas box. That's, Bro, that's, that's, that's I have to say on that. That's like a hundred and fifty dollars saving. Are you wait? Are you, that are you? Yes, the, yes. All of them are identical Holy in price. They always do that. Shit. GW does them all the same price. I, I okay. So apologies to what I retract what I just said. Um, you absolutely pick up a crisp box if you could find it. I now I know why people were trying to pick them up. Wow, yeah. that's a save. Oh wow, okay. Okay. Um, the I start realize, collecting or whatever they call it now they keep changing the name I think it's, it's called watchers of, oh no, that's not watchers of the gate that's the Christmas box I think but combat patrol you, so combat, combat patrol patrols is that's also pretty good yeah and actually hold on I'm going to do math real quick 60 help me do math 60, okay so the combat 50, patrol comes with what it's, it's three bikes silence so that's 50 and 50 mm-hmm so that's that's a hundred. Comes with five custodian guards. It's hundred fifty. So it comes with three bikes, which are sixty. That's not a bad deal. And oh, by the way, little side fact. I know we didn't talk about sisters of silence, but guys, guys, I spread this around. Please listen, listen. Oh man, this is the end of the podcast. Oh crap! I should have said at the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, if you pick up the Star Collective, right, it comes with ten sisters of silence. Please do not use one of those sisters of silence as your knight centura, as they recommend. Do not do that because then you have nine sisters of silence, which is not a full squad. Yeah. What you do is you go to eBay, you get yourself a $10 to, to $15. She's called Esmelda Brazkov. Hopefully Dave can, this one, Dave, please add to the YouTube. Please, I beg you. Take okay, Esmelda you Brazkov. you post about it. Oh, so I will, I, I will. Find. I'll find it on eBay right now. You, you We've find talked about Esm- this model before. Oh, yeah, exactly. You take yeah. Esmelda, Esmelda Brazkov. You get 20 heads for 10 sisters in the box because it comes with 10 heads for every five. You take, rip off Esmelda's head, put a Sisters of Silence head on it, and there's your Knight Centura. Please do not use one of the 10 as your Knight Centura. It will, please, just don't. I'm going to do it just to aggravate Dan. Oh, my God. It would, oh, my Lord. Literally, I twitch. Here, I just looked it up on eBay. It's $15.99 for new. $15.99 hmm. for new. I actually went up in price. I got mine for like 12 Or buy Valerian and Alea. Actually, that's even a better thing. Buy Valerian and Alea for, what, 50 That comes with a Shield Captain and also a Knight Centura. I think it's 60, right? Someone correct me. I don't know. Where's it's okay. Oh, it's actually it's 55. 55 for two models, and you get a shield captain and also a knights in tour. That's also perfect. Um, but yeah, no, they're a cool army. Um they're very specific to play. You gotta have to jump from cover to cover and stuff like that. But otherwise, yeah, they're they're I have nothing bad to say about them. They play as they play, and they're they're really cool and they look nice. All right. Yeah, well, I think I think that does it for the custodians, and I do believe that does it for us tonight. Um, as always, we do want to thank everyone who does listen or watch. Remember, it's available on any podcatcher that you're on, and as well as on YouTube. Um, obviously, I didn't say at the beginning, but you know, like, shares, all those sorts of things, subscribes, all that kind of stuff really does help us. Um, for what we have planned for the rest of the year, there's a little bit of time left. Um, what we're probably going to try to do for next week, because um, this week is, is is very busy for the rest of it with finals and all those other sorts of things. So I know we're not going to have any other time. Um, What I think we're going to try to do for next year might, sorry, next week might be that prediction episode. Um, We'll we'll detail exactly how it's done, but if you listen to D6 generation, we're going to kind of mimic what they do with some additional, uh, some additions that I want to do to it. But I, I I like that idea because I think that's sort of a fun thing and we can see in a year's time and reflect on it. And what did we come up with? And are, are we accurate at all? Or are we just terrible at trying to figure out what the future is going to be? So we're going to see how, how good we are prognosticating. We're going to have a way for listeners to also be able to provide feedback, both of what they think of um, our choices. Do they think we're right or wrong as well as a spot to be able to put in their own option and then 
when the time comes, we're going to take a look at that and see, did the listeners agree on anything? Is there some sort of trends that we noticed? Um, as always, like I said, we do have a Facebook page now that is up and running. Um, once my semester's over, I can finish up the Discord. A lot of it's actually ready, but I have no time to work on anything this week that isn't grading or, or, or something like that. So the idea is to have all that kind of stuff out in the new year and, and wherever else that we go to. All right. So um, at the long end of this here marathon episode, I will close this out by saying, as always, have some good hobbying and some great gaming.